That's the highest resolution they can get on my boy. That's the highest resolution they can get. Man, man, man. Yeah, this is going to be, like I said, this this one, this is going to be sports. This is sports. Right now, I'm going to show, I'm showing you guys Kevin Pierre-Lewis, Connecticut's own, right? Uh, one of the best, one of the most powerful players I've ever seen in Connecticut's history. You know what I'm saying? Sub V. Yes, sir. So this is going to be a sports related stream. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm just showing some high school highlights. Of some of. Uh... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I can do the copyright reasons. Obviously, I can't show professional highlights real quick. But anyway, I'm going to use that as background. I don't know what kind of music they used. Oh, V, since you're here, since it's you, I did say I was going to show you. Because remember when we were talking about um, the other day, um, I was talking about. Um, I was I was specifically talking about. Certain people going missing because they thought they could put certain men on men on child support. <laughs> I'm gonna find that clip. <laughs> oh man. Hey, what's up, Pyro? But yeah, this is gonna be sports related because I'm I wanna specifically um target Cam Newton's um Cam Newton's interview with 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 Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay. I want to I want to talk about that interview. That's what that's what inspired me last minute because I saw that he dropped an interview with with, with Shannon Sharp. Um, yeah, man. But since you guys are here, I did say I was going to share a a a a a, a, a zo. A, it was a Corey Holcomb clip, but it was a zo. It, it was it was when he was joking about how. <laughs> certain 304s be going missing because they think they could put people on certain people on child support but he made a joke about it let me see so what uh cory holcomb can men grieve i think that's what the episode was called yes this was a classic episode now i want you guys to before I get into the sports, since since it's you, because I did say I was going to drop a video on it, but I just, these past two days have been super, yeah, I've been shot these two days. I've been busy as hell, interviews and all this stuff. Playing, oh yeah, exercising for real. You know what I mean? So, but <laughs> when Corey Holcomb came through, this was the episode. This was like it says that it says three years ago. Sorry, it says uh it came out in 2020, but it really didn't. They're just showing um a replay of the show. This interview actually came out in 2019 or 2018. This interview came out in 2019 or 2018. But I will say this most of the info, I don't know if Reaper Reloaded is gonna come up here. But he can tell you, most of the knowledge that I have is from this man here, from Corey Holcomb here, and from these shows, specifically when Corey Holcomb would go on Zoa's show, on the Zoa podcast, and drop gems upon gems upon knowledge. Most of the stuff that you hear <laughs> a lot of these guys in the Manosphere spouting today, Corey Holcomb was on Zoa's show in like 2015, 2016 spitting knowledge already already covered most of the stuff you know what i'm saying so i do have to find the clip where cory holcomb was talking about <laughs> oh man it was hilarious hold on for a second what is what is we, just <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't, start the show. we, we didn't even start yet start so what <laughs> you said hispanic a hispanic girl Everybody want to smash. What's the deal? 
Three jail children. over? Yeah. Hey. It's some, some like Middle oh, Eastern. Arab. Yeah. That's okay, what well, I'm trying. not a white girl. <laughs> he said to me. So I'm about to so yeah, I already know what part I'm at. Let me see. <laughs> uh, v said, I just started watching Corey. Corey's the real deal. I'm telling you. I'm and V, before you see any of these people in the minute, before you saw uh Andrew Tate and Kevin Samuels and uh, uh these people that got fame, I'm telling you, Corey, you had got you had comedians like Corey Holcomb, Patrice O'Neill. Bill Burr, uh, Chris Rock, you know, to a lesser extent, Chris Rock, you know what I'm saying? But these guys really paved the way for the way that we talk. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going <laughs> to show this. is I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you the type of person Corey Holcomb be, is when he be making his jokes. I'm just giving you a snippet. This is the type of this, you know, when people be crying about people joking about on them. And, and the reason why I'm, I might be a bit insensitive is because I'd be listening to this guy. But I'm going to show you real quick. I can't stand this. I'm thing. just saying it's not a white girl. No. Yeah, she, she's, she's somebody, somebody white. white. Yeah. I'll wait for it to be over. <laughs> oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, mansions oh, will man. finally start that on top of Floyd's uh, uncle dying. Okay, right here. Ladies and gentlemen, mansions. Uh, so right here. This is going to be the intro of the show. And they're going to talk about where this is uh, <laughs> this three, four minute segment of Corey Holcomb about to go off. It starts off with Zoe what introducing the topic where at the time Floyd Mayweather was going through multiple deaths in his family where his uncle died, right? And people were sad about that. But he was going to start mentioning how his baby mother died. And that's when Corey Holcomb starts going off. Oh, we'll man. finally start. I got a tough topic, All right? right? Mm -hmm. We got to deal with it. You guys heard R Roger Mayweather died. Yeah. yeah God bless yeah. the dead. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, and, and on top of that, on top of Floyd's and then watch this. This is when he, when he mentions Floyd Mayweather's baby mother. This is where it goes off the rails. Uh, Uncle Diane, you heard that his baby mama passed. Yeah. Uh, the mother of his three children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> what? <nigga? laughs> he went to jail over her, right? Yeah, he did. He got millions of dollars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He told me, I was like, hey, she get in the car. <laughs> That's how it be going, dog. Did, did, did Puffy Baby Mama die? Yeah. Oh, Don't yeah. he got millions of dollars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is about to be bad. You know, I just know I'm not above it. Right. If I got that kind of bread, you cannot annoy me I if I have Corey a certain said, dollar Corey amount said, hey, knock the bitch off. That's hilarious. Right. When you got that paper like that, things can happen where you oh don't worry God. about it no more. Nice That's thing. like, that's Kim like ain't, the Kim ain't fuck over Puff though, right? Wait, Puff got millions of dollars. Yeah, Yo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's him talking about Diddy, by the way. This was in 2019. This was in like 2019. Latest. It was either 2018 or 2019. They had dropped this interview, mind you. 2019. Latest. <laughs> <I'm t> <laughs> <laughs> now you see all this stuff coming up. Uh, 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 they're talking about Diddy right now, but I'm telling you, people knew about this. Thing, these things, these people. Uh, there was very few people that was brave enough to talk about what Puffy be doing behind the scenes. <laughs> she got kids by him, right? Yeah. yeah. Ain't that liability? Well, yeah. Hey, is that liability? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, say so, so. Oh, man. okay. If you think so, I'm telling you. So you you've heard everybody talking about the year 2020 being terrible already. Sure. You know. So right there, man. It's oh yeah. This actually was the begin. Sorry, this was the beginning of 2020. Sorry, this interview came out in the beginning of 2020. But I don't know if you want me to replay this video. I don't know if you want me to replay this video, but you heard. <laughs> He said, he said, he said, 
did Floyd Mayweather baby mama owe a million do- uh, dollars? What? Did, what? Wasn't she a liability? Yeah. Who <laughs> am? I'm tell this. I'm telling you, this man right here. I'm telling you, this man right here. <laughs> People, normies are not ready for this man. And I'm telling, I'm telling you, normies not ready for this man. I just had, um, I have recently brought my cousin with me to see Corey Holcomb stand up in Hartford, and I'm telling you, he was like, I did not see this coming. I'm t- I'm telling you with, when I see new people see Corey Holcomb's like stand up for the first time they they not ready <laughs> they 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 not ready man they not ready <laughs> anyway let's see uh I'm gonna replay this part one more time one more time while I get some of these sports things see if I can pull up some of these sports topics via Twitter via tweeter but i'll play this video one more time just because i did say i was gonna drop the video of it <laughs> who came in I'm I, right oh my god ladies and gentlemen mansions oh, will man. finally start i got a tough topic all right right mm-hmm. we got to deal with it you guys heard R- roger mayweather died yeah, yeah god bless yeah. you dead yeah. right uh, uh, and, and on top of that, on top of Floyd's uh, uncle dying, you heard that his baby mama passed. Yeah, uh, the, the mother of his three children. Jail over? Yeah, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> what? Nigga? He went to jail over her, right? Yeah, he did. He got millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He told me, I was like, hey, she get in the car. <laughs> That's how I be going, dog. Do, do, do Didn't Puffy baby mama die? Yeah. Oh, Don't he yeah. got millions of dollars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is about to be bad. You know, I just and know then, I'm not above it. Right. If I got that kind of bread, you cannot annoy me if I have a certain said, dollar Lord amount said, in the bank. Hey, knock the bitch off. That's hilarious. Right. When you got that paper like that, things can happen where you oh don't worry God. about it no more. Nice that's like, me. that's Kim like a, the Kim ain't fuck over Puff though, right? Wait, Puff got millions of dollars. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got kids by him, right? Yeah. yeah. Ain't that liability? Well, yeah. Hey, is that liability? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I can say so. Oh, man. Okay, if you think so, I'm telling you. So you, you've heard everybody wow. talking about the year 2020 being terrible already. Sure. You know, mm. started off like everybody was talking about 2020 vision and vision boards and law of attraction and this our year. And this year's been really hard. Lose Kobe Bryant, January 26th. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, like I said, he'd even he'd even leave, he'd even um he even let Kobe had it. <laughs> he, like I'm telling you, I, I I'm I'm telling you, he don't he this man does not care. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. I wanna speak about the Cam Newton's podcast. I mean sorry, Club Shay Shay's podcast where he was talking about he had cam newton on and cam newton's one of these guys i do not understand why he was so hated during his career i i still don't get it for the life of me you know what i'm saying this guy was that ninja for mo for basically most of his career he was that ninja in high school he was that ninja in college you know what I'm saying? He 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 could make a case that he had the best individual quarterback season for a co- uh, in in college in 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 history. Heisman winner, you know what I'm saying? NFL MVP made it all the way to the Super Bowl, you know what I mean? Um a a pioneer in NFL in, in the NFL, you you know, um really a man that I've I've always had respect for but for some reason he got so I don't know why he got hate the hate that he did I, I still don't get it but you know that's 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 life right there but here 
Cam Newton's going to talk about Kirk's Kirk Cousins' uh, contract. Um, one hundred and eighty million dollar contract he got from the Fal- Falcons this uh, season. Even though we don't even know if he's healthy now, mind you, the money that they gave Kirk Cousins, they could when Lamar Jackson was available in the off season, like last off season before he won his second MVP, they could have gotten him. They basically could have gotten him for that money, and probably even less. And they didn't want, they wouldn't even have to give up no 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 draft picks. They could have just signed him outright. But, you know, I I don't get it. They could have gotten, and Cam Newton was going to even bring up, they could have gotten <laughs> Justin Fields and Mike Vick. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, a 2010 Mike Vick and this year's Justin, Justin Fields for that price that they got. Like, they could have gotten both of those guys for the price that they gave Kirk Cousins. And you have, there are certain people in the NFL that just they'll just oh they always get their money like a Kirk Cousins a Jimmy Garoppolo these guys and you'll be like how how are, how are these people getting this money <laughs> how are these people getting this money so let's take a listen to uh Cam Newton here what the Falcons paid Kirk Cousins they could have got Cam Newton Justin Fields and Michael Vick <laughs> for that price you do realize they could have gave up two first round and got Lamar Jackson for. But we're not talking about that. And I'm not saying that to to, to shame Kirk Cousins. My- fair use, fair use, by the way, fair use. You know what I mean? Shout out to Club Shay Shay. Please subscribe to his podcast. He's had some interesting individuals on this year. Well, really, throughout his the uh, the podcast's tenure. My favorite interview that Club Shay Shay did. Hmm. One of my favorite, I don't know what, what I would consider my favorite. Hmm. Out of all the interviews that he did, I really like the Terrell Owens one, though. I really like that Terrell Owens interview that he did. That's another person who was like super hated. Let me check uh the Club Shay Shay channel real quick. Let's check Club Shay Shay real quick. Club Shay Shay. You know what I mean? That um do you have a playlist? It does he have I hope he has like a playlist of the people. Let me see. Out of all the interviews that he did, I you you know what? I really like the Johnny Manziel interview. If you guys have the chance, watch the Johnny Manziel one. Watch the I really like the Johnny Manziel one. Obviously, I like the Cat Williams one. You know what I mean? That was that's gonna go down in history. <laughs> that interview is gonna go down in history. Hmm. What else? What else? Who he had on? Let me see. I can't wait till. Shannon Sharp actually gets LeBron James on. That's going to be hilarious. Who else? Uh, yeah, because I've seen uh, some of the interviews. Oh, why, if you guys get the chance, watch the uh, the one that he did with. Um, watch the one that he did with Isaiah Thomas. From the from the Detroit Bad Boy Pistons, Isaiah Thomas, one of the top five best point guards of all time. You know, some people still have Isaiah Thomas at number two. They're not trying to give Steph Curry no. <laughs> they like fuck Steph Curry, man. <laughs> but yeah, watch that one. I'm trying to look through all the interviews that he's done. So he's the oh he's done one with Magic. Oh yeah, he did do one with Magic Johnson. See Lamar Odom Earth. Let me see. Cause I'm I'm trying to go over the ones. Oh yeah, Dame Dash. Watch the one he did with Dame Dash. Definitely watch that one. Um 
Yeah, Terrell, watch the one with Terrell Owens. I really like that one. I like that one. Hmm. Let me see what else he had. Who who else he had? He did have AP. He did. Oh, hell no. Nah, fuck that. Chris Tucker, Rick Ross. Yeah. Oh, watch the one with Ken Griff Griffey Jr. Do you know that? In, you know, I'm not even a, a baseball guy like that. Do you guys? Do you guys know with Ken Griffey, Griff, Griffey Jr., he wasn't an, an anonymous Hall of Famer? It was one person. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who? We got to put these people's names out there. I, let me. I couldn't believe this ish. Hold on for a second. Let me. <laughs> Yo. Oh, man. And then obviously the first one with his brother was powerful. But let me put, put play the Ken you got one, man. Oh, man. Let me walk. Let I gotta find. I I gotta find. Yeah, this is the clip. When you Ken Griffey Jr. is like, this is one of the best boys baseball players of all time. Some people, there's some people that even have him as the goat. Believe it or not, you know what I mean. And I'm not like the biggest. Ba Trust me, I'm not the biggest baseball by guy. My baseball knowledge is limited but can Gr griffey jr was that guy he was that guy literally he's like basically without the injuries people said without the injuries he would have been the best probably would have been the best one of the best baseball players of all time and not only that they a lot of people have him if they're doing like a a, a, a an mlb uh all-time all-star squad a lot of people got ken griffey jr in the outfield and people say he has the cleanest swing in baseball history. So imagine somebody in football, American football, that had the greatest throwing motion or the greatest uh, throw in, like, he he has the best throwing, he looks the best throwing the ball in quarterback history. And they like, that would be like, say, like an Aaron Rodgers or a Dan Marino, those guys, right? A Warren Moon. Imagine if somebody was like, ah, Aaron Rodgers. It's like everybody votes Aaron Rodgers in the Hall of Fame, and it is like one person that does does uh, doesn't want want him in there, even though he still went in first ballot. You know, obviously, but to he should like Ken Griffey Jr. should have been in a a a, a, a unanimous decision. You know what I mean? Like easily. It was one person, but we couldn't find out the name. These people, people be hating. You came up for the, uh, for enshrinement. You received 99.32% <laughs> of the vote. <laughs> and I, I, I remember listening to you talk. You heard that? 99.32% of the votes. That means it was one person that was like, nah. <laughs> There's always going to be that one guy that be hating for no reason. Not even I'm talking. People be talking about women and stuff. It's not even gonna be a woman. It's gonna be a man <laughs> stepping in on your success. Oh, and they ask you, were you upset that you weren't unanimous? You're like, no, I'm. I'm in. I'm. I'm good with that. But deep down, you know, you should have been unanimous. What? You should have been the first unanimous player selected to uh, uh, Cooperstown. <laughs> what was a little bit? I mean, come on, come on, Griff. Was there yeah. a little bit? Uh, yeah, I was a little hot. <laughs> okay, I, really hot. Uh, you know, you're telling me, and, and people don't really understand the voting. You're telling me you get 10 votes, hmm. and I'm not one of the top 10 players of that year? That's how it works. <laughs> what? So somebody left you completely off the ballot. That's, that's, now that's, ladies and gentlemen, is called hate. <laughs> that ladies and gentlemen is because it wasn't just him that means out of that list of the eligible people of the 10 i gotta look up who these <laughs> they left him off why and everybody else had him in the top 10 maybe even number one of that year he receives 99 percent of the votes 
and it was and even though obviously he was gonna go in that year anyways with obviously with 99 percent of the votes but i gotta find out who was that we gotta find out who that dude was we gotta find out who that was because that's just hate that's just hate i just i uh <laughs> it's crazy yes come that's on that's not work hold on and he's still and that person he or she are is still allowed to vote yep i uh, don't know about that now okay oh, okay yeah yeah you. Uh, but I don't know who they are, but that's how it is. You get 10 votes, and it ain't like a first, second, third play. You pick out 10 people. That's why they right. go by percentages. Right. Wow. He got 85% of the vote. Now he didn't so get you 85% get to pick out. of the first So in vote. other words, there might be 50 people, like 25 people on the card. You pick any 10 you want. Now, mind you, can, let me let me also put into context about Ken Griff, Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. was the, probably the only one that I remember from that 90s early 2000s era that did not get accused of no juicing no steroids no cheating he was clean mind you he was one of the rare clean athletes out there like confirmed confirmed in that in that in that sluggers era in that sluggers era that he was a part of he was probably the only one that was clean So I know I, it, it's still I know I know everybody else gave him his credit, but that bothered me when I found out he wasn't unanimous. I thought he was unanimous, but apparently he wasn't. There's going to be one person. And like I said. It could be. Because you know what I think it is with Ken Griffey Jr. You know what I think it is? <laughs> People not even gonna like me when I say this because people do you remember? I don't know if anybody knows because that's kind of where Ken Griffey Jr. really got started getting that fame in the um I don't know if the 90s or early 2000s. He I remember he was at the uh home run derby when it was during the home run derby and he was just chilling. He was just chilling. He had his hat but what was interesting, he had his hat backwards. And I remember there were some people. I remember people were talking about that at the time that were saying there were some people that didn't that, you know, all the young people thought he was cool. Like all the young baseball players thought he was cool as hell for doing that. But you got some old school <laughs> people that was probably hating him, and he was still smacking off home runs with his hat backwards during a home run derby. I think that's what it was. Low key. You you'd be surprised the little things that people decide to hold on to to hate on you for. I think that's yep. what it was. And somebody left Ken Griffey Jr. with those numbers, with those accolades, completely off the ballot. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you you, you, you that should have been upsetting. Yeah, let's talk about your swing. It's many said it's the sweetest swing, it's the greatest swing, it's the smoothest swing in MLB history. Do you feel you let, let's just say we went out did a batting practice and I gave you 10 pitches. How many could you hit over the fence? Right now? Yeah. Seven. What? I still take batting practice. <laughs> <laughs> so just in case they have an old timers game and you know just somebody. In case. <laughs> no, I want to be caught slipping. Or it could be because of this quote. Because he did, I remember uh, the Yankees wanted him, and he see, and at the time he was like, "Fuck the Yankees, I ain't finna play for the Yankees." So that could also be it too. Two things can be true. Two things can be true because <laughs> there's certain franchises that will want you, right? And most of the times you you're not allowed to say no that's a little dirty secret about the you know the sports entertainment industry you'll wonder why like certain players they'll go to certain teams and they just don't play well or they play well but they're not happy a lot of the times cuz what happens is that they'll have the, the agents will basically accept the deal without their consent and then on top of that the agents done already told his their family you know what I'm, you know, <laughs> to already told his, 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 uh, model girlfriend, yo, we moving to New York and, or something like that. And 
it's basically a forced move. So stuff like that, you know, <laughs> you'll be you'll be surprised. It'll be like so. It was, I, we got to find out who the guy was that did not that that left him off the 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 the, the short list. Cause he should have been a unanimous. He should have been unanimous. Ken Griffey Jr. should have been unanimous. Coming straight out of high school, too, straight to the right, straight into the limelight. I mean, come on, man, that boy was cold. That boy was cold. <laughs> that boy was cold. And on top of that, I'm talking about we talk about legacy. His father. Was there before him had had a had a, a a solid career, you know what I mean? Like this, it it was a perfect uh, a, a passing of the baton. I mean, you had to be a special type of hater to to hate on Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> a special type of hater. Anyway, let's go back to Cam Newton right here. I went a little bit off track, but I got time. I got time. I got time. This is this is sports talk. This is sports talk. My take personally was Cam's getting old. He ain't getting no younger. He's 32 at the time. He's coming off a shoulder injury. Lynn's Frank. Cool. All things that are not quote unquote serious injuries. They're not career ending. Career ending. If you tore your Achilles back when you was playing, you're done. Yeah. It was you. Now, mind you, that's a reference to Kirk Cousins right here. And he got Kirk Cousins, mind you, he got this money. They offered him this money, and he's li he's literally coming off a season-ending Achilles tear at age thirty-six. Oh yeah, oh yes, 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 they do that. Agents be dirty like that. Agents be doing that. Yes, they do. Oh yes, they do. Now, obviously, it's not legal but you'd be surprised because athletes got dirt they'll but what 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 they will do they'll agree to the terms right and obviously the player will confirm but a lot of the times what the agents do to force their hand they will tell his family hey what's up garrett the agents what they will do is they'll the agents will tell the athlete's girl model girlfriend oh we move into la oh we move into new york all he needs to do is sign this stuff happens guys tr 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 oh trust me them agents them agents be slimy as hell they'll do shit like that they'll they'll put they'll even leak they'll leak the news before it's even done that's that's how they force quote unquote force you it's not that they force you like to sign on the but they'll do shit like that to where it's like, well, it looks like it's a done deal. Now my teammates already know that. <laughs> now my teammates already know that I'm already in talks with another team. I might as well leave. I'm, I'm telling this is this is how it works. I'm telling you. And they wonder why they end up offline. <laughs> you people be wondering why some certain athletes where they'll they'll get traded or they'll go to a team or destination it doesn't work out and you'd be like it seems like everything was fine what what happened you don't know what's happening behind the scenes a lot of the time the agents will leak the news early and it ends up forcing the athlete's hand and the athlete wasn't even sure about the deal but the agent their own agent will leak the news early which will force the athlete's hand or how about this but when I mention a model girlfriend, the athletes, I'm oh, sorry, the agents will send certain athletes, certain girls to keep tabs on the player and to influence him to go certain places. These things happen, man. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Gary's like, yeah, yep, 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes 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 this is what or it'll be like certain players like i said there's certain deals that happen in sports athletes cannot say no to on some mafia type stuff there's certain deals 
even in um in so called free agency, right? There's certain like the athlete will be like, I don't know if I even want to. There's this narrative that all athletes want to go to L.A. and New York. That's first of all, that's a bunch of BS. That's a bunch of BS. Most athletes be trying to stay away from especially New York because of the the, the spotlight. Now, there's a lot of athletes that want to go that probably want to go to L.A., but they, they like to party in L.A., but they don't want to play in L.A. But what the agents will do. They'll put them on to a girl. And we already know all bitches want to go to L.A. or Miami, one of these spots. So they'll be like. The agents will be get in touch with the athlete's girl or the girl that he's trying to smash or a girl or girl or a model that he's interested in or a or another female celebrity that he's interested that's living in that city, L.A., Miami. Person sends him a DM. Oh, it would be nice if you came here. They do the same to the college athletes. <laughs> they they don't just use money. They use 304s. They use female celebrities. They use. Oh, man, I'm telling you, man, the sports, the sports world. It, you know, I, I I wish people watched. People got to watch. Uh, What's what's that movie? The the uh the movie. With Jesus Shuttlesworth, what what in Denzel Washington? What's that movie called? I'm I'm blanking on it. I'm blanking on the name of the movie. Jesus Shuttlesworth. He got game. Yes, he got game. You gotta watch. He you gotta you gotta watch the sports movies. He got game. You need to watch Blue Chips, the one with Shaq in it. These these movies. It gives you uh, just just a, a, a little sneak peek on what be going on behind closed doors with these deals, how trades are done, how uh, these kids were recruited to college before the NIL, before the NIL deals and all this stuff. It, 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 it shows you what, what it really is, man. I, I really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, y'all got to watch. Watch. He got game and watch blue chips and there's probably more uh examples that we can we can do that but <laughs> also oh hold on for a sec <laughs> cunning like a snake <laughs> he said yeah they, yeah i'll tell you american especially when you talk about american sports it's they they what what they what they put on the billboards is it's it's or what they put on Sports Center, you know what I mean? <laughs> v, you're exactly right. It's almost like they're slaves. Yes, this is why when you see this is how I know you're when you're when you're actually dealing with when you see an athlete in America, particularly in America, and I'm talking about. They're always talking crazy about the athlete, always saying he's bad or he's this or he's that. The only reason why they're doing that is because he doesn't have the right agent. A lot of the times he has or he has the, or the agent is somebody that that a lot of the owners don't want to deal with. <laughs> this, I'm telling you, this happens in Europe with with soccer. <laughs> this happens people don't people like people don't even understand that you you ask you ask the average normie soccer fan in europe what do you think about paul pogba lukaku balotelli uh these players they'll be oh my god these guys are awful but what people don't understand right here Rayola, agent mino so there was an agent who just who recently passed away, I think last year. And this guy was a super agent in soccer, right? Like one of the biggest agents, but a lot of football coaches, they hated having to work with him. And the people that he represented, the people that he represented, I'm going to show you. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Balotelli. 
Lukaku, Matuidi, Paul Pogba, Xavi Simmons, most infamously. You know what I'm saying? He, he, Moise Keane, these, a lot of these people, you know, anytime anything negative came about some of these, some of these guys, they would just run with it. Especially, I'll say recently when it came with uh, Shavi Simmons. You know what I mean? Because he, Shavi Simmons was, I'll, 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 I'll use Shavi Simmons as an example, right? This is how easy, this is how easy uh, the media can turn the public against a player. Shavi Simmons, right now, he's playing in a German club. RB Leipzig having the best season of his career so far, right? He's still on loan from Paris Saint Germain, mind you, right? Xavi Simmons originally was in the Barcelona Academy, right? Probably the biggest well known club in the world, FC Barcelona. They like to promote, they like to highlight their youth academy, their young stars in the making. Shavi Simmons pulled a power move, him and his dad and I think his older brother, if I'm not mistaken, meaning Shavi Simmons was looking for a move at like the age of what, 16, 15 years old. But he was, he was, they were, Barcelona was grooming Shavi Simmons ever since he was six years old to become the future captain of FC Barcelona. So they always highlighted him. They put him on billboards. I'm talking about before he was 15. But rumors started happening. He wanted out. Him and his, well, mostly his dad was like, yo, something's up. We want out. And his dad was right. Barcelona was going broke behind the scenes. But a lot, but a lot of people didn't know this. Xavi Simmons forces his way out of PSG. He takes more money, goes to PSG's youth academy, and then he ends up being promoted to PSG's main team. But what happened to Xavi Simmons in those two years where he decided to leave Barcelona? The Barcelona and their media members and the people of, of the Spanish media, they turned on this man. Turned on this man. He almost, he almost, he almost, low key, he almost fell out, meaning. Low key, he almost did not make it in terms of not being the player that he was supposed to be. Because the media, I'm talking about the media turned on this man. I'm talking about you had like his fan talking about he was nothing, he's overrated, blah, blah. He became one of the most hated players overnight just because he wanted to move. And really what was happening behind the scenes, Barcelona was going broke. And his dad did not want his son to be a part of that circus. And we all saw what happened. Everything got exposed. Everything got exposed. Where Barcelona was going broke, they were asking Messi to play for free for one year. What kind of shit is that, bro? But this was the stuff that was happening behind the scenes. But most people couldn't put two and two together. You know what I mean? But... Barcelona already put a lot of capital behind Xavi Simmons, meaning they literally put him on like a lot of uh, uh, fan, 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 fan paraphernalia as the the you know the future star of the of the team. They they put a lot of a uh, capital behind him. You know what I mean? There's a lot of players that are stuck at clubs. They can't leave because they know if they pull a move that they need to pull, they're probably not gonna make it. <laughs> through the media that they're, 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 they're just not going to make it <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you it's it's very it's very deep it's very deep i like using european football uh examples you know soccer examples a little bit because that's that's like right up my alley but um i'm, I'm telling you you will start looking through the complex thank god shavi simmons was was able to um when he went to psg he was able to get a loan to the Netherlands club PSV and really shine. And man, I'm, I'm so happy he was able to do that. So he was able to make the 2022 world cup show his, show his skills. He didn't start obviously, but he was like 19, 18 years old, <laughs> but he was able to resurrect his career by going on loan 
And right now he's on loan on RB Leipzig, having the best season of, of his uh, career so far at his young career. He's only, what, 20 years old? Yeah, he's only, he's, yeah, let me see, what how old is he right now? Yeah, he's still, yeah, he's still 20 years old. He's going to turn 21 this month. So I'm 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 so happy that things are working out. He's fi- he's blossoming into the star that Barcelona knew that he was going to be. But when they realized they couldn't control him anymore and he wanted out, they they tried to sabotage him via the the news via the media. But like I said, like the average normie fans, they was hating heavy on Xavi Simmons during that time, during that transition. And most players, they don't make it. Once they decide to bet on themselves and make certain moves, that's how easy it is. It's that easy. Let's go back to the interview right here. You never say. So now you're giving this person the money coming off an injury. So how am I supposed to feel? Because the same questions and the same concerns that you had with me, obviously you don't know. But look, that you see, you don't have don't have those concerns with him. And if you give Kirk Cousins my resume, he probably would have got more. But I'm tripping. But I'm bitter. But I'm mad. I'm not. I'm just exposing the truth. And mind you, shout out to Cam Newton because he's just been a guy that's always been hated for no reason. But he, a lot of the stuff that he says, even like when it came to this year when he said there are game changers and there are game managers. And when he listed the name of the game managers, people were mad at him, but he was correct. He said, I, I, let me say the, the uh, he said, Dak Prescott, who else? I can't even remember the guy's name off the 49ers, the, the quarterback, B- Brock something. Brock, um, what's that guy's name? <laughs> I don't even remember. Brock Purdy. What? Well, so let me look up that list that Cam Newton had. Cam Newton list of game managers he said the realest shit though right here you got game managers and then you got game changers one of the realest things he ever said and he i remember he had yeah brock purdy right here you see the list brock purdy Tua Tagovailoa, jared goff and dak prescott these are game managers that's all he said. And he caught so much flack for saying the truth. But that's been basically, <laughs> that's been Cam Newton's career. That's basically been Cam Newton's career. <laughs> he, he'll, every, every, every time he has an opinion, he, especially now, like he speak, he's speaking facts, facts. I'm, I'm sorry. These are game because <laughs> when he said it, he got so much hate. I don't know. I don't. I'm like, bro, these are these are game managers. <laughs> these these brothers right here that he listed, right? These are quarterbacks that are on stacked ass teams with great play callers at the helm, meaning great play callers at the either the head coaching position or the offensive coordinator coordinator position and these guys what they ask these guys to do is just don't fuck up the game for us that's all you got to do brock purdy is playing with a damn all-star avenger squad on his on his team not just i'm talking about not just defensively but offensively brock purdy had who he had brandon iuke c mac debo kittle and a fullback and an elite fullback. They don't even make fullbacks in football no more. Kyle Yushik. Yushik. I hope I'm saying his right. This is the best fullback in football. They even have the best fullback in football. The best running back in football in C-Mac. They, 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 and and, and he'd be, he be playing wide out. You got Debo Samuels who could play who, who could play wide out and come out the backfield. You got Brandon Ayuk and you got George Kittle who's a top five at worst tight end in the league and at one point was the best tight end in the league. I mean, damn. I mean, how much more help? (laughs) And you got Brandon Ayuk, 
Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Brandon Ayuk is going to come back this season. I think he's actually going somewhere where else this season, if I'm not mistaken. But that's what that's what Brock Purdy had. I mean, this ninja had so and and you got Kyle Shanahan calling the plays for you. I mean, and it's a run first team. I, I, and I, I, and when you look like the 49ers have always been so stacked. When you when Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo in the 49ers, right? When they beat the Packers like two or three years ago. Garoppolo completed three passes that game, bro. I shit you not. He completed three passes. I'm not making this up. Jimmy Garoppolo completes three passes. <laughs> To beat Packers. Oh yeah, sorry. Eight passes. Oh my, my mistake. Eight pass. This ninja threw eight passes to beat Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. He went six. Oh, sorry. Six passes. He attempted eight passes. He completed six for seventy-seven yards. And he smack and and the 49ers smacked the Packers. This was in, I think, 2022 playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. 20 uh 2022. Yeah, 20, yeah, 2022 playoffs. Or no 20, 2020 playoffs, exactly. 2019, 2020 playoffs. I mean, bruh. That's what you call. <laughs> He said, man, even normies ruin sports. But like I said, because a lot of the people, they they liked Jimmy Garoppolo because of low-key how he looked. No homo. So I think that's what it is because he looked good for the billboards. And unfortunately, you still kind of have that aspect in sports where the people that look good for the billboards, they try to promote more than the people that's actually uh, the real deal. <laughs> Like <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo almost won a damn Super Bowl by doing nothing, bro. I'm telling you, like, but then like what what will happen is you'll have these quarterbacks, they'll have success because of their team. And then they'll want to tell us that it's because of them that they're winning the game. And you're just like, and and you're just looking at the the <laughs> and you're looking at these sports commentators talk, and you're just like, are we watching the same thing? Are we watching the same thing? This this ninja completely completed six passes. But I, like I'll say this, I don't understand why in college, right? Let's take Alabama for example. Like they, I remember they had won a national, they won a national championship with like James Coker at court, like Coker at quarterback. One they they won they won one at uh with uh. uh like some no, they've had like Alabama had won national championships with no names at quarterback, but we'll acknowledge the obvious. We'll acknowledge that Mac Jones clearly wasn't the best player when he won his national championship with Alabama. He was just a passenger, which is no, but he was a game manager, right? For Alabama, but we will, we will be like, yeah, it's obvious. He's a game manager, right? But for some reason in the NFL, it will be like the same situation, but with a different player. But then we want to say, oh, man, Brock Purdy should be in the MVP conversation. And by the way, for all the normies that were talking about Lamar Jackson should have even won the MVP. I'm like, bro, that that's low key. That was Brock Purdy's fault because y'all because <laughs> you had these dumbasses right here that was talking about Brock Purdy should win the MVP. And then when the 49ers face the uh, face the Ravens in prime time football, it was clear. It was I'm talking about it was so clear. I'm first of all the Ravens smacked the 49ers that that uh, uh <laughs> in that game. I'm talking about <laughs> hey straight up R. Kelly pissed on these these motherfuckers. Straight up R. Kelly pissed on these dudes. Like it was, it was people was hyping up that game, and the Ravens smacked them, and it was clear that Lamar Jackson was levels above. Like I'm talking about, just levels 
above Brock Purdy so much to a point where they're just like, damn, you know what? Maybe it's not about the numbers. And people that the normies that were trying to discredit Lamar J- Jackson from his MVP don't realize could have had the same gaudy touchdown passes as like the Josh Allens, uh, who else that had big numbers, those guys. But what people don't understand is Lamar Jackson would literally lead his team down the field, but they would be at the two yard line, one yard line, three yard line. And they, they would just run it in with Gus Edwards. <laughs> Gus Edwards had like 15 or 16 rushing touchdowns, but most of it was literally from the three or four yard line. But people want to want to want to lift up Aaron Rodgers like he's God. But most of those like 45 touchdown passes that he had uh, uh, in the previous year, it was literally play action from the three yard line. <laughs> it would be like play action from the three yard line. And that's how we got a lot of his numbers. And, but Lamar Jackson wasn't doing that. They was run. They was running the ball in the red zone. <laughs> when they hit when it, when they hit the red zone, they was running the ball. That's why his put task to his touchdown passing numbers wasn't as big as everybody else because the Ravens are a running team, but it really is a running team because Lamar Jackson is the best runner on the team and the best passer on the team. That's how it works on that team, but it's still a running team. So whatever running back is back there, they're gonna run it in the end zone. Uh, sorry, in the red in the red zone from the from the twenty five yard line down, they're gonna run it. But like I said. That, like I said, that was the normies' fault because they were trying to tell me, Brock, remember? People was like, Brock Purdy's in the NFL MVP conversation, man. Man, the 49ers. Do you remember, Garrett, I don't know if you remember this. Garrett, I don't know if you remember this. Remember that when people on, on, on Twitter were talking about this is going to be the race bowl. <laughs> this is the ultimate race bowl because it was like Brock Purdy, C-Mac, George Kittle, right, versus Lamar Jackson, uh, Zay Flowers. And, and and um obj but i'm like well, hold up the 49 ers are stacked way more stacked offensively than the ravens i mean i'm like come on but i thought it was gonna be an even ass game but <laughs> even stomped the ravens stomped out the 49ers straight up stomped them out and it was unfortunate that the ravens faced the chiefs but or if they, if they didn't have faced the Chiefs, they would have they would have went all the way to the Super Bowl. It's just the Chiefs got the best quarterback in the league, so <laughs> and they and the Chiefs got hot at the right time. And who's to say if Zay Flowers didn't fumble at the at the at the um at the goal line, to, and if Lamar Jackson didn't choke in the in the, in the fourth fourth quarter where he threw a, a interception in the red zone, who's to say? Who's to say what would have happened? He said, yeah, I saw a little bit of that. <laughs> you're, just, you're just like, I like when I saw that, I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I don't see the hype, but like, I'm like, first of all, Lamar Jackson is way better than Brock Purdy ever will be in just in life. Just, <laughs> I'm sorry, just in life in general. But I'm like, okay. Tell me, all you got to do, man, if you just put all you need to do, the Rams proved it. All you got to do is make sure your team is stacked as hell and make sure you have a quarterback back there that has some ta- just ha- have some talent back there. Just a little bit of talent. That's what they did with Stafford. He He's a talented quarterback and he can't. He doesn't like I say, he didn't even need to run because he's he's not even a runner. But the team was so stacked. The Rams were so stacked. That, that literally all they all Stafford had to do was do what he do, and they were able to win the Super Bowl in 2022, if I'm not mistaken. 2022. That's all they needed to do. But you got these, and, and like I said, Stafford is no game manager. Shout out to him. But some of these pe- people that they want to lift in the air, right? Who else? Uh, he said Tua Tagovailoa and uh, Dak Prescott. And Jared Goff, like Jared Goff, I never got the hype. I never got it. Tua, he tricked a lot of people. <laughs> I'm, I'll just leave it at I'm gonna just leave it at that. Tua tricked a lot of people. You know what I mean? Tua 
like I hope Dolphins get rid as soon as possible. They need somebody back there. First of all, that can stay healthy. <laughs> Second of all, I think Tua tricked a lot of a lot of people. Dak Prescott, shout out to him. He had a great first season, but he's a game manager. Nothing more, nothing, no, nothing more, nothing less. Shout out to him. He got his money. I don't know to to say whether he deserved it or not. I, who's to say? I don't really think he should be. He should have been that highly paid, but that's the business. That's the business. But yeah, Cam Newton has gotten it right most times. There's really only when we talk about at the quarterback position in the NFL. There's really only five or six game changers at that position. Let's look up the uh, all NFL teams. Let me see. On the NFL teams. There's really only. There's only really five. Quarterbacks. Like literally five quarterbacks in the in the NFL that are game changers. That's Lamar Jackson. Josh Allen. Joe Burrow. Patrick Mahomes. Let me see. Uh, let me see. And who else? Who else? I'm looking through. I'm looking through the teams. Maybe Justin Herbert. Maybe. You know what I mean? Oh, CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud is a, a game changer. So we'll add him. So let me let me put him above Justin Herbert. Let me put him above Justin Herbert. Because Justin Herbert has had plenty. I, I know people. I'm not saying Justin Herbert is uh, a disappointment. I'm just saying that I know Justin Herbert ha- is t- is a, is has talent, but he has had help. He's had offensive help, but he still hasn't even gotten a playoff win. And C.J. Stroud with literally no help. <laughs> C.J. Stroud had like no help, bro. Yes, his uh his his uh his OC is a former assistant of Kyle Shanahan's, but I mean, bro, people, come on, CJ Stroud had no help, and you saw the record he had. Technically, he had two playoff wins because the last game before he made the playoffs was a playing game, meaning he had to win the game to make it to the playoffs. So two must win games, he did, he pulled it off and got his first playoff win, you know what I mean, in his in, in in his rookie season. I mean, and I'm talking about the Texans were left basically left to die after Deshaun Watson was out. So how many? So that I said five. There's a five. Let me see who else got game changers. Yeah, everybody else. Yeah, everybody else is shit out of luck, in my opinion. Yeah, there's only there's only five game changers in the NFL at the quarterback position. And if you want to say Deshaun Watson when he was healthy, but the the simple the, the simple fact is he he isn't healthy. So you got two fringe 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 game changers in Justin Herbert and Deshaun Watson. Everybody else, and then and then you have your five with Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, and CJ Stroud. Everybody else, everybody else can kick rocks. <laughs> everybody else can kick rocks, man. I'm sorry. Everybody else can kick rocks. But you they, they be giving these quarterbacks these these big ass Trevor Lawrence. Hell no. Nah. That is Trevor Lawrence. I'm so, I know I know people might get mad and people. Look, I'm a Titans fan, but look how much props I'm giving a CJ Stroud. So I don't want to hear this shit about oh because you were tight. Look, Trevor Lawrence might be one of the most overrated athletes that I have seen in my lifetime outside of I'm talking about even in college. Like I remember with Trevor Lawrence coming out of college. Hold on, let me let me bring up Trevor Lawrence's picture right here. Let me bring up Trevor Lawrence right here. I'm not saying he's not good. I'm just saying he's super. He's very overrated. This is I'm gonna tell you. This is why I love Josh Allen. 
The reason why I love a Josh Allen is because not only is his physical gifts are there, but he's he doesn't get hurt. But what's the point in being Trevor Lawrence, being 6'6", all this weight, all this, you know, you know, uh, the the strength that you supposedly have, but he he has he has he can't play. He seems to to like not be able to play in, in inclement weather. He always gets hurt, like it's like it's nobody's business. Like <laughs> like he's always getting these niggly naggly injuries. I mean, what's the point of even being that big if you're gonna get hurt the way he does? And he barely gets touched. I I I, I don't get it. That's just me. But. Trevor Lawrence since college has been super overrated, bro. Trevor Lawrence is not a game changer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not afraid of Trevor Lawrence like that. I'm afraid of Stroud. I'm afraid of Stroud. I'm like, man, I saw Stroud play this year. I'm like, well, we're fucked. <laughs> I was like, yep, we're fucked. Trevor, look, homie. Trevor Lawrence. Let me tell you about Trevor Lawrence, bro. In Clemson. Super, very, very overrated, right? Easy at first. Of, like when I my comp for Trevor Lawrence when he was coming out of college, you know who my comp was for him? Jameis Winston. That was my comp because really, there's no difference when you look at the tape between Trevor Lawrence and Jameis Winston. Both played in the ACC. Both had some suspect ass stats if you really look at it, but at least Jameis Winston has a Heisman trophy to show for it. Now, both of them national championship winners, credit to both of them, right? But at least Jameis Winston got a Heisman to show for it. At least. There's but there's their their stats, especially when you talk about their in their in their seasons, their last seasons, when you talk about Trevor Lawrence stats. Jameis Winston's stats both got had some suspect ass stats, even though they were both playing on stacked ass squads. Both of them had stacked ass squads, but suspect stats in a weak ass ACC in college. Weak ass conference. <laughs> and on top of that, Trevor Lawrence was not carrying that team. Nope. When, when I saw Clemson play, it was look. I, I know people gonna be mad at me when I say this, but Travis Ntn was carrying that team for Clemson. I'm sorry, but that's what I saw. Any time I'm talking about Travis Ntn was the best player on that Clemson team. I'm talking about running it and catching it. I'm talking about any time Trevor Lawrence couldn't see nobody down the field. He always be. Dumped it, dumped it down to 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 T to to, to Travis Entienne. I'm telling you, but they were. But the, here's the thing with what, I, what, what the reason why I say Trevor Lawrence is overrated is because they were trying to tell me that Trevor Lawrence was a generational talent, and I'm just I'm 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 like, okay, is he actually a generational talent, or you're just telling me? He's a generational talent because when we talk about general, okay, if Trevor Lawrence is a generational ta talent, what would that make CJ Stroud? Just, just, just give, give me, what would that make shit? What would that make Justin Fields? What would that make uh, 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 Joe Burrow? So out of all these people, Trevor Lawrence is the generational talent, really? And then you look at the stats that Joe Burrow had in college. You look at what Joe Burrow was working with coming into the NFL and for him to get to the Super Bowl in his second year. We're talking about Joe Burrow here, but Trevor Lawrence is the generational talent. Even though technically Justin Fields was a, it, it, I'll say this, in my opinion, Justin Fields was better than Trevor Lawrence in college and he proved it in the two games that he, they played each other when Ohio State played Clemson the first time Justin Fields had through the game ending interception but Justin Fields outplayed Trevor Lawrence in that game just people don't realize it and Justin Fields proved my point right because everybody had Clemson beating Ohio State in the next year in in the in uh the the uh the next year but Justin Fields 
completely outplayed, like completely outplayed Trevor Lawrence. And anybody that be watching Justin Fields play knows the punishment that he be taking and the refs don't be helping him out. And he still beat him. So I, 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 when we call, when we're talking about generational talent, nah, y'all niggas can miss me with that shit. Y'all just like, <laughs> I always, I always make a joke about Trevor Lawrence. I said, if Trevor Lawrence ever cut his hair, he would have been decreasing his draft stock. That's, I, I think that's, I'm like, I think it's just the hair. <laughs> I, I think people just, they're looking at the hair. They're just like, and the reason why I mentioned the hair is because I would literally hear the so-called NFL analysts when they were describing Trevor Lawrence's game to the normie audiences and why he should be the number one overall pick. They were always mentioning, they would always end it off, and he got the rock star look. I mean, he is just, I'm like, what does that have to do with his game? <laughs> and then I remember, so when he was fresh off, when Trevor Lawrence had won the national championship, when he won, when he won it, and literally, in the offseason, you had these guys, what's his name, Paul Feinbaum, talking about, is Trevor Lawrence en route to becoming the best college football player of all time? And I'm just like, you guys cannot be serious. <laughs> I, was, I was like, guys, stop. Just stop. I mean, damn. <laughs> I was like, I was like, no, no. I'm not saying Trevor Lawrence ain't shit, but he's but he's not a game changer, and he's definitely not a generational talent. We we throw that 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 term around like it's like like we 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 don't we have no respect for that term. In my opinion, there's just there's, there's like no more respect that you can get from that term. We could we like like uh, Trevor Lawrence might be one of the more overrated athletes athletes in my opinion that i've seen <laughs> him who else while considered overrated mm. at the quarterback position specifically i'd have to i'd have to take a look at that i'd have to, I'd have to take a look at that but trevor lawrence now nah. <laughs> man gary <laughs> i but but yeah shout out shout out to you gary for mentioning his name because i completely forgot about trevor lawrence in terms of um, what I was actually going to start talking about, because I was going to bring up um, later on Tebow and how he might be the most overrated in terms of his legacy. And I'm not saying he's not a legend, but you can be a legend, but be a little bit overrated, in my opinion. Because like when we talk about just college legacy with Tebow, I think it's it's a bit overrated, meaning the led it's the the myth is bigger than the legend when it comes to tebow the myth is bigger than the legend because the first thing when you're talking to normies about college football or you talk to the uh average you know Fl florida fan whatever the first thing they'll talk about tebow well, he won two national championships and i'll be like whoa 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 whoa, whoa time out he won one national championship as a starter the first one, Chris Leak was the starter. Tebow would come in in packages. He wasn't the main guy throwing the rock. That was Chris Leak. Chris Leak was the one throwing the rock. Anyway, <laughs> that's like that's off off rip. So when you, when they talk about they'll they'll the first thing they'll say he won two. I'm like no no no, he won one as a starter. He wasn't the starter for the first one. He might have been more popular than Chris Leak. But I, I thought it wasn't a popularity contest, you know, but that's a whole nother discussion people don't like to have. <laughs> anyway, shout out to Cam Newton. I want to see if they got any more Cam Newton clips from the Shea podcast because he was talking. About, I wanted to see. Oh, OK, let's react. This is a live. Let's let's do this live reaction. So apparently. They asked, they had asked, oh, let me also shout out. Let me give a shout out to Jordan Love. Jordan Love can be a game changer. I think Jordan Love is will eventually be a game changer. He showed me a lot 
from the, uh, I'm talking about from Thanksgiving and into the playoffs, he showed me a lot. Jordan Love is a to me. I know it might be a bit of a bold take, but Jordan Love is a game changer. He's definitely on that path of game changer. He's definitely going to be a game changer for the Packers. Yes, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I believe Jordan Love will eventually. I don't know if it's gonna be this year, but he's definitely on that game changer arc. He's got the chemistry with these wide receivers now. I mean, it, um, I don't uh, now. I don't know what they're gonna do without Aaron Jones. I don't know how they're gonna do it, but we'll see. If if Jordan Love's put up good numbers this year, especially with Aaron Jones uh going to the Vikings, that's gonna people gonna really start putting respect on Jordan Love's name. So shout out to Jordan Love on that end. But let's 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 talk about let's let's see this live reaction from Cam Newton. Apparently, they asked him. Who's going to win the Super Bowl first? Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Dak Prescott, or Jalen Hurts? Mm, that's a good question. That's a good question. I don't know if he asked asked him that specifically, but let's let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. Fair use the Club Shay Shay podcast interview with Cam Newton. Who do you think wins the uh, wins the Super Bowl first? Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, Lamar. What happened? What happened this year? Because it seemed like everything was perfect. Mm-hmm. They had home field throughout. They were clearly from about week nine on the best team in the NFL. And it wasn't close. You look at the team that they beat. They beat Miami about. Hold on for a sec. Um... Out of all these, you know who I think might win. <laughs> you know who I, who, who, who I think might win the. Super Bowl first out of all of these because they say what Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Brock Purdy, or Jordan Love. I think Jordan, I think Jordan Love has a better chance. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. When you look at the quarterbacks that they have in the AFC compared to what they have in the NFC. Jordan Love easily he has a shot to become the number one QB in the NFC. Who else they got? They don't got who they who else they got in the NFC at, at the quarterback position? Like who you who you could say is the best quarterback in the NFC. Let me bring up this list of teams again. Hold on. Let me bring up these list of teams again. Hold on for a sec. <laughs> so when we talk about the path of least resistance. Because I'm I'm look I'm not even I'm not even talking about ability wise because if you're looking at ability wise when you look at the list of the quarterbacks, obviously Lamar Jackson is the best quarterback out of all. Uh, let me see one two three four five six seven out of the seven. But at the same time, Lamar Jackson he's in the AFC and on top of that he's in the the toughest damn division in. <laughs> he got you know who he got in his division he got Steelers. He got the Browns and the Bengals. That is the toughest division in football, bro. I mean, you don't got he got to face these teams twice a year. People and then people was wondering why he was getting hurt. I mean, damn, bro, when you facing the Bengals, it's gonna be a shootout. You facing the Browns, they got mutants on the defensive ends. People don't even understand. Like Miles Garrett is a mutant. People don't even understand. These some of these people like these like Miles Garrett was made in a lab or something because I I remember when he went number one overall from Texas A and M and I was really looking at his physique I was like this guy is he's just he's built he's just built differently bro this 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 man is he's Miles Garrett he's gonna he's gonna be a first ballot Hall of Famer bro he's gonna be first ballot Hall of Famer no question. Hey, first of all, the num the numbers that he's getting in terms of the sack totals, it's it's scary how high he already is at like age what 28, 27. I mean, come on. Like the way that they fuck that, they go the Steelers, the defense that that he, that, that Lamar Jackson got a face. TJ Watt, come come on, man. <laughs> These motherfuckers are mutants, dog. 
these, t- particularly when you talk about the Steelers and the Browns, they have created their teams to stop Lamar Jackson from able to just run around the edge on these motherfuckers. So this is why anytime the Steelers, the Ravens, the Browns, the Bengals, anytime any team from outside of the AFC North tries to face any of the AFC North teams, they can't win. Unless if your name is the Chiefs, they can't beat they you can't beat the, these teams, even when the Steelers are average, but because they they have built their teams to where the quarterbacks only have one second to throw the fo- damn football. Because they have built their teams to stop. Lamar Jackson from running all over. Yeah, Miles Garrett, he's a he's he's a mutant. He's a mutant. <laughs> I'm gonna show sure, hold on, hold on. Let me because because uh, plus people gotta because uh, I done seen some of these these professional professional footballers in person. These guys are glad these are our modern day gladiators. People don't understand how big these motherfuckers are. Miles Garrett physique. Like this guy, now mind you. Tell me, oh, let me not show the, the sus pictures, but look, this guy, mind you, this guy, 6'5. What what's his weight? Uh 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 and and uh, all right, six four. But they have him really listed at 6'5", 270 pounds. It's all muscle, bro. It's all muscle. You got this ninja chasing these motherfuckers. Imagine this ninja ch- chasing you off the quarterback position. And then on top of that, you have a uh, 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 where he's getting double teamed. And then on top of that, you have J- uh, Jadavion Clowney coming off the other edge. <laughs> Another physically gifted athlete coming off that edge. Then on top of that, you got a Denzel Ward. You got these really physically good corners covering your best wideouts. Homie, you're you're if nobody want to face the Cleveland Browns. You know what I mean? And only to, only only the special quarterbacks were able to put up numbers against the Browns. And that was like guys like CJ Stroud, etc. Tell you, these these guys, man. Yeah, especially he said this is turning fruity real quick. No, <laughs> but to, like people don't understand, like the the players that they have rushing at these quarterbacks in today's age. These guys be six eight, six seven, six six, three hundred pounds, and can run a a a a a a a a a, 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 a four six forty and shit like a four a four seven forty. This that's crazy, man. These quarterbacks have no shot. And on top of that, they're not producing the same type of offensive linemen like they used to, like, 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 like they used to back in the day. You know what I mean? So that that's that's another thing. I I just wish, like, like, for example, I think the Detroit Lions could, could, they could make it to the Super Bowl if they had somebody different at quarterback. I don't think Jared Goff. I don't think Jared Goff, it's not even, I don't even think Jared Goff can reach the Super Bowl with the Detroit Lions, even though he's been good for them, but I don't even, I, I don't think he can even reach the Super Bowl. This was his chance and he, and he couldn't do it in in a, in a week, in a week division. That's just my opinion on that end. But let's let's listen to uh, Cam Newton here because he 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 said without a doubt Lamar Jackson. But I believe Jordan Love has the best chance to win a Super Bowl first out of all these players. God knows how much they did a demolition job on the 49ers. They blew the doors off Seattle. All the teams that made the playoffs or that was playoff potentials, yeah. they just didn't skate by them. They ramshackle. Mm-hmm. And then this moment. AFC Championship game on your home field, and everybody knows Lamar Jackson is going to be the MVP. Right. The only question is, is it going to be unanimous again? Yeah. I think one thing that Lamar and the Ravens organization just has to figure out is how to win the ugly games. 
it's one of them situations like sometimes when I look at Lamar, it's like, bro, you just stop thinking. And it's easy for a guy with that much talent to think, oh, it, it's so many, like as a chef, you can prepare this meal in so many different ways, but everybody know your signature, signature is smoked. Man, smoke this motherfucker and get, and, and, and get on about your day. You got to win. Find a way to win. Yeah, and that's the thing with Lamar Jackson versus the Chiefs. They passed the ball way too much, meaning they did, they did not establish the run. They, for some weird reason, they let the outside noise get to them in terms of, oh, all they do is run the ball. Man, if they can't stop you, they can't stop you. That's how it works. Now, I don't know why they let that get to them. Um, Especially Lamar and, and like I remember OBJ, mind mind you, OBJ. This is Odell Beckham Jr. Now he they they saw they showed him on the sideline. They was like, yo, he was like, yo, Lamar, why you like? He said like the lanes is open. Why you not running it? He said he told he told Lamar Jackson on the sideline like like yo, when you run, you change the game. He told him that, you know what I mean. But for some reason, Lamar Jackson he just didn't want to run. For, for that one game, which was weird to me. That was weird. You know, I don't know what he was trying to prove. I'm like, homie, they're going to talk shit about... Because now, after the game, you have the same haters that were hating about Lamar Jackson running. They was like, man, he should have ran. <laughs> just like, I, was, I was just like, you see? <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting, man, how that works, man. Shout out. how uh, How's it going, Angel? This because this, this is not gonna. This is not like I always say this, but this is not gonna be a long stream because this is a sports related stream. I wanted to speak on Cam Newton going on Club Shay Shay podcast and speaking the truth. So Angel said golf wasn't the answer for the Rams. Rams got to the Super Bowl with Stafford. Exactly. Exactly. Like golf to me. How do I say this now? Because because now golf is good now. He's solid now. But with the Rams, even when he was supposedly good, that was Todd Gurley, really. It was Sean McVay calling the plays and Todd Gurley um, carrying that team. And Todd Gurley was proved that he was he was the one carrying that team because once he his knee started going out on him again, Rams wasn't shit. Rams wasn't shit, and then they traded away to Todd Gurley to Atlanta. Then they then they eventually got rid of Jared Goff, and <laughs> they got uh, Stafford, and they were able to win the Super Bowl. And by the way, somebody had I think Garrett, you had mentioned Aaron Donald. Man, Aaron Donald might be the best player, just period, I've ever seen. He might be the best player, period, that I've ever seen. And that's no disrespect to uh I'm talking about that I've ever seen. That's no disrespect to a like a Ray Lewis, you know what I mean, an ultimate leader. Ed Reed, you know what I mean? That's that's no disrespect to those guys. That's no disrespect to a, a Ladanian Tomlinson, a Tom Brady, a Patrick Mahomes, right? But I'm just telling you, Aaron Donald. There are pictures of Aaron Donald literally being quadruple team. Quadruple team. He was right. I'm talking about regularly triple team. Reg, I'm talking about on a regular basis, double, triple team. He can't be covered sing, single. You, you can't. You just can't. <laughs> you can't cover him. <laughs> just, just one person. I'm talking about there are. You can literally search up Aaron Donald triple team and you'll get all these pictures i would constantly see the replays when they'll show the replays when the rams play and you literally see aaron donald being triple team like on the regular like that's that's just that's just fucking ridiculous bro every time like aaron donald was a a, a person he just he still he stood out bro i think i would i think his rookie year Rookie defensive player of the year. I mean, oh, he's always been in the Pro Bowl, I think, every year. I mean, man, that, Aaron Donald might be the best player I've ever seen. I'm talking about I've ever seen because I wasn't there. Because I think Deion Sanders is the go to football. 
but I didn't obviously see him play throughout. But I want to give him his respect because he literally played two sides of the ball. <laughs> so I have to give him his respect or I have to give a Lawrence Taylor his respect because like he he changed he he changed the game. He made two positions. He made two positions famous: the outside linebacker and the left tackle. And they had to change the rules to make sure players like him would not prosper, because he was getting quarterbacks hurt. And I already knew they had a. Looking back at the history, when he snapped Joe Theismann's uh, leg, and mind you, let it's exactly watch this. Aaron Donald was a monster. He said, dude was training to shred blocks with knives. Aaron Donald was a monster. And I, and I, and not only and on top of that, in an era where defense is basically discouraged, where they have made every rule to benefit offensive players. They, I'm talking about they've done everything in their power to make sure offensive players prosper. Wait, I'll see some running backs just running up the middle of the field being on touch. I'd be like, what kind of shit is that, man? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'll never forget what Deion Sanders. He's like, what kind of shit? He was like, man, what type of shit? He, st- he, he was talking to LaDainian Tomlins. He was like, have you ever seen a football player run up the middle of the field untouched? <laughs> well, like, this is the this is the the era that we're playing in, but I'm talking about AD. Sorry, Aaron Donald. I don't know if that's his nickname, but Aaron Donald, literally kung fu master, some kind of karate master, the best hands in the NFL. Undersized for his position, people don't even people don't even realize it until they compare him to his uh uh, uh his uh his contemporaries. You know what I mean? He said NFL changed rules since 1977 to increase scoring. I, I wish people could see. There was a commercial I saw. Like a, let's say a, a NFL commercial. 1970s NFL commercial. Like I remember they were showing like a, a 1970s NFL commercial where they were showing all these tackles that these football players were making. <laughs> And literally all the tackles that they showed in the commercial are literally banned today. <laughs> I got to show they I, I don't know if I if I if I can show it without a copyright, but it was hilarious. Oh yeah, that's terrible quality. This is terrible. This is terrible quality. I don't know if they actually have the actual commercial, but the commercial was so funny because they sh- they showed it. They showed the commercial and the tackles that these players were making. These are all illegal tackles. <laughs> like into like in today's NFL, every tackle that they had showed in the NFL were is like you can you would you would be banned from the league. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe they don't have it on YouTube, but you know, for 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 Aaron Donald to do it with like to do to do what he was doing, like that's like the, the hits that some of these players that 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 oh, come on, this <laughs> is is freaking ridiculous. Head slap was legal back then. <laughs> Man, the stuff that you these people they they would literally do these like WWE moves on these quarterbacks in the pocket. Just straight just straight up WWE type sumo wrestling type moves. Anyway, let me go back here. Win ugly games. And we can talk about the other stuff later. Patrick Mahomes has found a way to do that. Right. I don't care what we need to do. Or we can talk about all this other then drop balls. We can worry about all that shit after the end of the game. Let's find a way to win. Travis Kelsey, man, we're going to find a way to fucking win. And I think for Lamar, once he figures that out, not to say that he hasn't, but everybody around, because it's just not Lamar. Right. It's everybody finding a way to win. That's what made Tom Brady and the New England Patriots so dynamic. 
because it could be, we're going to find a way to win Remember that Super Bowl in Atlanta. That was the ugliest Super Bowl ever. Yeah. The Patriots versus the Rams. Mm-hmm. Low score. We thought it was going to be a fire. Uh, 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 Up and down. 35-31. Uh, man, it was. Facts. That was a defensive football game. The Patriots versus the Rams. I think what what was that twenty yeah the twenty nineteen Super Bowl, that was a def, that was a defensive display from both teams, you know. But shout out, you know, to the players involved in that game to understand. Okay, we just can't. Whoever's gonna make that interception, that mistake is gonna <laughs> is gonna lose that game. It was, it was a low low scoring game. We gotta find a way to win. And once he figures that out, the organization figures that out. It's funny that you say that because Brady mastered that. And you mentioned Patrick Mahomes because you look at the Super Bowl against Philly, he threw for 180 yards. Mm-hmm. But every yard mattered. Correct. Every this He didn't have what he uh, ended up going overtime. And I think he might have had close to 300. Mm-hmm. But you say that is like finding ways to win mm-hmm. that people don't think you can because everybody thinks that he's supposed to throw for three, 400 yards. And that's the only way they can win. Right. But sometimes he turned into a game manager because he, Tom Brady was the greatest game manager and the greatest right. because he understood, man, this is going to be a low scoring game, man. I can't put this ball in harm's way. Right. I can't fumble. I can't make mistakes. Or, and by the way, when I talk about the rules changing and when I talk about Tom Brady, um, people think that it was because of Tom Brady that the rules changed. No, it was because of Peyton Manning. Because Peyton Manning was struggling early in his career. They 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 really loosened up the rules, especially when they they had changed the rules regarding the wide receivers and how they were not now they weren't allowed to be held by the DBs because the Colts had a stacked wide receiver uh, core at the time. People don't understand. And on top of that, Manning was playing in a dome and he was still fucking up in the in the beginning. So <laughs> <I'm> t- <laughs> Pyro said Angel ruined industry. <laughs> oh shoot, man. Man, shout out to you though, Angel, man. You know. Oh. Speaking of which, I'm going. Well, let me not tell people where I'm going, but I I will be attending cer- certain sports events very soon. But I'm not going to say when. I don't want people to rob me. <laughs> Anyways, let's see. But yeah, yeah, man. A lot of the stuff because people blame Tom Brady, but really it was the rules were meant especially in the early 2000s, they were really changing it. But it was mostly to help Peyton Manning, but Tom Brady ended up benefiting the most <laughs> from it. And then he ended up getting his his due, especially like, like imagine like you, you're, you're a player and in Tom Brady's case, um, when he got his specific rule change was when he got hit in the pocket in the knee. And then they changed the rules. They're just like, oh, okay, you can't hit quarterbacks on the lower legs when they're in the pocket. Then you talk about Aaron Rodgers, which was the most egregious of them all, in my opinion. At least with Tom Brady, I get it a little bit with the lower leg thing when you're in the pocket. But I mean... Are they going to change the rules for the running backs when they get hit in the lower legs? Did they change the rule for Rob Gronkowski when he kept getting massacred in his lower legs? But anyway, that's another story. But with Aaron Rodgers, his was egregious. His was egregious. The the, the guy from the Vikings, the real big ninja, I forgot his name. <laughs> I think he played college football in UCLA or LSU. I'm not, I don't remember. He was the <laughs> it was a real big ninja, real big country ninja that tackled him. The dude tackled him. It was a regular tackle. Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone, right? And then the NFL decided, okay, you can't tackle the quarterbacks this way. You have to, you can't put your body weight on them when you tackle. What? <laughs> Just 
I was like, I almost stopped watching football after they had changed their rule. I was like, so I'm like, so quarterbacks can't even be tackled as a normal. I'm like, I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> oh man. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Now mind you, that's why I have respect for Cam Newton because people don't understand Cam Newton got tackled like a football player. I'm talking about T- Cam Newton had zero protection from the refs. Zero. Zero protection. Knowing how to compartmentalize the different versions of yourself. And that's what makes you a game changer. Because it may say, hey, 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 easy, easy, easy. Hey, check, check, check. Hey, Bronco, hey, Bronco. Hey, 52 is the mic. That's checking into a, a run play. Right. It's too high. I know what it is. I want to take this shot. We're calling two plays. Right. This second and short or third and one. We're going to be aggressive. Okay, hey, 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 easy. Hey, I got to get us out this way. First down, one yard gain, cool, that's fine. I need to understand what version of myself that I need to go into my deck of cards and say, okay, boom, I'm gonna throw that little that little ten of spade out. It's gonna walk though. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So each so each game, a qu- and also Tom to Tom Brady's credit, he was the master of understanding when the play is over, when to check it, when to knock it. I can make a soccer reference with Tom Brady, but most people won't get it, so I won't even do that. But he was very, I'll tell you, the best at respecting the game, meaning the ball was out of his hands two seconds, one, one second, one Mississippi, two miss, boom, ball out of his hand every time. And he knew, Tom Brady was very smart. He knew if you play it like that, and I don't understand why quarterbacks don't do that more often, but that's that's just my opinion. But he knew the more you knock it, two yards here, three yards here, a check here and there, somebody's going to get impatient, and then your receivers will finally get to see some open daylight because linebackers are going to start cheating. Safeties are going to start cheating. That's when you start dicing them and slicing and dicing them apart. I, it's heat. Was with, with Tom Brady. It's a, it's a perfect soccer reference that I have, but most people won't get it. <laughs> most people, so I can't even say it. But Tom Brady was the best at respecting the game and not holding the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like holding the ball for like 30, 10, 12 seconds, knowing that, <laughs> that the, the, the linemen can, like the, the defensive linemen and the, 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 the defensive ends, they can't really tackle you the way they can so he respects the game in my opinion in making sure he has the ball out of his hands in one second i can respect that (laughs) you know what i mean outside of these other quarterbacks that really take advantage of it which is really isn't fair but it is what it is quarterback cam newton has to go in there i have to be the best version today of what is needed of me today I might not need to be Superman today. Put a microscope to it and even this play. Okay. Not today. Because out out in, in a given game, you may have anywhere from 45 plays to 62 plays. That's just been documented. What a regular game for offense may look like. Those, those plays, each play will never look the same. So you have to sit up here and say, oh, ooh, I got one right here. Hey, hey, easy. We good. Set wide 80, easy. No, 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 no. We good. And you're taking your shot. That same thing may come out the next play. You want to take another shot. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, kill that. Kill that. These- and also, shout out to um, Cam Newton because he also, what people don't even understand, you know, when people talk about diva wide receivers, to me, one of the biggest divas, and, and, and people don't even say it. I don't know why, but Kevin ben- Benjamin, this ninja, man, this this ninja was a disgrace. That's a disgraceful uh, uh, wide receiver one. You know what I mean? This dude literally ate himself out the league. Him and, um, what's his name? Eddie Lacy. Both of these guys ate literally ate themselves out the league. Ate themselves out the league. These are professional ballers, and these guys can't even stay in shape. I mean, I, I'm, I'm like, bruh. It's 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 impossible too because when you're looking at the wide receivers, you would think that they'd be in shape. But Kevin Benjamin, because he did a lot of pouting, 
And a lot of the balls that Cam Newton would throw towards his, it was because this this ninja was always complaining a lot behind the scenes and even really in front of people. But people like to put people for some reason always put a lot of blame on Cam when things wasn't going his way. But Kevin Benjamin was doing a whole lot of whole lot of pouting, a whole lot of pouting. That was a to me when we talk about diva wide receivers. He was to me Kevin Benjamin was the worst because he wasn't even really. Like to me, he wasn't even that good, in my opinion. And then when he had left, um, when he had left uh, Carolina, and then he he went he went to uh, Buffalo. This dude was talking shit on the way out, and I'm like, bro, the only reason why you was still at Carolina all these years is because Cam Newton probably kept you there. In terms of, they probably asked this man, look, we can make some moves. You want to keep him here? And he probably said yes. And this ungrateful ninja, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I can't like when you when you dealing with whole ass niggas on your team. That's got that's the worst thing ever. When you like on a, anybody that's played sports in the past, that's got to be the it's the worst thing ever. When like one of the best players on your team is a whole ass uh, uh, <laughs> is a 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 three o four ass ninja that's one of the worst things ever man because you're basically at his mercy and i'll say with kevin benjamin he this this dude this dude was one of these people like i would i would have for me i would have been traded kevin benjamin if i was carolina i would have been traded him i would have been traded him i don't understand how ted ginn jr this non catching <laughs> as wide receiver as wide receiver one has a great this is a non catching wide receiver when you're talking about like Ted Ginn Jr. This dude has no hands. He's the classic all speed, no hands. He has a great season being the wide receiver one with Cam Newton. Right? And he's not even built to be wide receiver one like that. You know what I mean? And he can't catch. We say Kevin, uh, Kevin Benjamin, Kevin Benjamin. He's just one of those guys that. Exactly. But what? But he had his best season. Ted Ginn Jr. He's he's a slot receiver, but he had his best receiver. <laughs> he had his best season as wide receiver one when Cam Newton had won the MVP. When it was like T Ted Ginn Jr. was wide receiver one when Cam Newton won MVP. Greg Olson at the tight end position. Yeah, but he had just came in. And Greg Olsen is not like a a, a, a volume catching uh, Travis Kelsey, you know, Shannon Sharp type uh, uh, a receiving tight end. He's not that. That's not Greg Olsen. But that's really his. That was his best catcher on the on the <laughs> on his in in his in his MVP season. And I think Kevin Benjamin was one of the biggest detriments in Cam Newton's career, in my opinion, because. Kevin Benjamin did a lot. He just he did a lot of pouting really in front of everybody, but people didn't pick up on it and behind the scenes, in my opinion. Because as soon as he left, he was talking shit about Cam Newton. I was like, oh, you you one of those dudes. And Cam Newton was probably one of the main ones that kept him here because I'm pretty sure Cam Newton could have got his ass traded. Wow, wow, wow back. Yeah. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Kevin Benjamin, he was a princess. He was a princess. He was a little princess. Let me see. Kevin Benjamin. You know what I mean? This guy, you know, I remember he tried to, um, he was talking crazy about Cam Newton. Cam Newton approached the ninja. And he didn't stand on business. <laughs> he didn't stand on business. <laughs> he fought, he he folded after talking all that shit. Talking all that shit. He was the hold on for a second. I clicked the wrong thing. I'm gonna show you some pictures of this whole ass ninja man. When I saw him come into training camp looking like this. 
when I saw this, I was like, bro, what in the hell are you doing? I was like, this dude coming in looking like the tight end. I was like, yo, this, I said, this dude wilding. And then people, <laughs> people told him, stop fat shaming him. I'm like, he deserves to be fat shamed. Get your fat ass in the gym. <laughs> Jesus, man. People at the lemma, he's going, man, that ninja going through something. This ninja ate himself out. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Undead chronics here. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Puniti. <laughs> oh, man. Man, y'all caught, but y'all caught me at the wrong time, though, because I all I'm just talking about sports. <laughs> I'm just talking about sports. And I was just talking about how fat Kevin uh Benjamin was. And really, this dude was really a diva. You know, people want to talk about um when it comes to diva wide receivers, um, OBJ, even though I do believe Odell Beckham Jr. uh has some alternative lifestyle to him, but I don't think he was. I don't think he's a diva because he's proven to be a leader now at the later stages of his career. But Kevin Benjamin has always been a diva, even back at his um his Florida State days when he was in Florida State. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the war band that checked in with me. <laughs> but uh, Kevin Benjamin's he's a diva. He was a, he's always been a diva. But Cam Newton took the brunt of it. Unfortunately, Kevin, uh, Kevin, Kevin, he's a, he's, he's just a hoe. Kevin, he's just Kevin's a hoe. <laughs> he's cause he's always act. He's always been that way since his college days. I, I still, you know who I still, I still remember. Cause I wanted to touch, touch in on this because Cam Newton was talking about the Florida team, which I need to do a live stream on specifically the Florida team that won the national championships um um with the one with tim tebow the pounty twins joe hayden janoris jenkins like uh riley cooper that team the man that team was freaking stacked percy harvin that team was stacked bro but i wanted to touch in on that because i still remember a lot of these players when they were in college and oh aaron hernandez was on that team but I wanted to, because Cam Newton was talking about it on Club Shay Shay. And, you know, people like to talk about, you know, the gay rumors when it comes to Cam Newton. And I think there's credence to it, to be to be quite honest with you. As much as I love have love for Cam Newton, I, I think there is some credence to that. <laughs> Unfortunately, from what I've heard. Um, but I don't think it's just Cam. I think. Because remember that the the gay rumors came out from Aaron Hernandez. And but I also think. Tim Tebow. When he's talking about, I, I think Tim Tebow. Um, has some. Um, alternative lifestyles stuff to him, too. I can't prove it. I, I can't quite prove it, but here, here's the thing with, with Tim Tebow, right? I remember when Tim Tebow was talking to, or they were saying, oh, Tim Tebow didn't smash nobody. He, he was a virgin until marriage. I was like, that is cap. <laughs> I said, man, that is cap. Unless if he's not telling the full story, because I know plenty of gay dudes, right? Where their story is, oh, I was... Uh, celibate whatever i didn't sleep they'll 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 say i didn't sleep with no woman but yeah they're not lying they didn't sleep with a woman they slept with a man but what they but they, what they would their guys would be like oh I, I didn't sleep with no woman during my time in college but they was on some michael sam type stuff <laughs> they was on some michael sam type type stuff in college and i'm gonna tell you this when i was in high school a lot of people's favorite high school football stars 
was on some alternative lifestyle on the down low. Remember when Michael Sam, the 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 gay player, the openly gay player, right? Remember when he said he was like there was there was he said there was some stars that 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 found my number and said yeah I, I I'm 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 like you but I just I can't come out the closet and when Michael Sam had revealed that I was like whoa 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 first of all there's not a whole lot of stars in the NFL so that's you're you're really narrowing down the <laughs> the list who who do, do you want to be specific about who who the stars that was texting you that was saying that they came out the closet. <laughs> but like I said, there was a lot of interesting stuff going on with that Florida team. A lot of interesting stuff that went on with that Florida team. And for Tim Tebow to say, oh, yeah, I was celibate during cop, please. Homie, even if you didn't want to. Tim Tebow was a Heisman winner. He was the most popular person in Florida. <laughs> he was the most popular person in the state of Florida. You are Heisman winning college quarterback on paper please <laughs> you was you was you was you was fucking somebody now you could make that you can make the excuse and say oh i, I wasn't smashing no bitch but eh. <laughs> we'll we'll just leave it at that we'll just leave it at that <laughs> but man shout out to the to the homies of the war band checking in i wish i was talking about some real shit today but nah I was like, let nah, let's let's talk about some let's talk about some sports because um Cam Newton had touched on he did touch on that Florida team that that Cam Newton was on as the as the backup. As the backup. I don't know if I can find that uh video. If I can let me see what he was talking he was talking about um Florida. Let me see. I don't know if they could. Uh... Hmm. I don't know. And he basically dispelled the rumor that he got kicked out of Florida because of a, a stolen laptop <laughs> or something like that. Let me. Uh... And by the way, that Florida team, that was probably one of the most stacked teams of all time but yeah i'll say this we gotta we gotta do because the documentary had came out on that florida team you know what i mean that was a stack they had like do you know how many nfl players starters that was on that team i mean god damn bro Man, they had man. That, oh yeah, I forgot about Ahmad Black and Brandon Spikes, and then the Pounty Twins. I mean, this that that was a that was an interesting squad that they had. That was an interesting. And I'll say this: Aaron Hernandez was definitely one of the better college football tight ends that I've ever seen. Um, yeah, that he yeah. Aaron Hernandez. People don't remember Aaron Hernandez, even when he was on the Patriots. Aaron Hernandez was a beast, bro. Aaron Hernandez was no joke. Now, I don't know if because I remember when that Aaron Hernandez documentary came out and they had that weirdo kid that was trying to say that Aaron Hernandez was his lover or something since high school. <laughs> that was weird. That was like really weird. I don't even know if that was true, but maybe there's credence to it because. He basically committed self-deletion after more rumors of that came out about his alleged alternative lifestyle. And like I said, nothing is impossible because people just think that gay people are punk punks, right? And people don't understand a lot of your favorite heavyweight fighters were <laughs> were gay dudes. Some of the toughest dudes that you will ever see. Like like a lot of people, a lot of pe uh, a lot of a lot of serial killers swung in in history. They swung both ways. When you talk about um, what's that guy's name? The guy that was slashing and dashing people. 
they did a movie on this guy on uh, paid in full i forgot what that man's name is the dominican guy from new york that was famous for like stabbing people being reckless i don't i forgot that man's name but uh uh uh, uh you know, rumors came out about him. Yeah, Midnight Sun said, I saw you live, so I had to check in. Man, man shout out to you guys, man. He said, Why well, wonder why ninjas turn into uh, butt pirates? I don't know. You know, people say there's something in the water, but you, you know what? Uh, you, this is my theory in terms of not necessarily why people turn into butt pirates, but I believe there are a lot of players or a lot of athletes in the positions that they are today right i don't think a lot of these players they're not naturally supposed to be this big meaning i believe they've used enhancements right a lot of them use enhancements or we'll take the example in the suburbs what happens in the suburbs is you wonder why like you see like a lot of uh caucasian dudes are very tall or just i'm talking about girls and boys but what happens a lot a lot of them not most but a lot of them what happens is when when their mother and father met they went off of genetics they married based off genetics i'm talking about both the mother and father a lot of them so they're already thinking years ahead in terms of that and then on top of that what happens to those kids in the suburbs is when their boys or girls they're going through puberty their body starts to really start to really grow a lot of their parents put their kids on hgh they won't now a lot of them won't tell you this i had to found i i found i ended up finding this out where the high school i went to i found out i'm talking about the year previous they had won the league the league title right and finished second or third place in in the state's championship but i found out that damn near most of the players on that team was on hgh right and i started diving deep and i'm really starting to look a lot of them their parents put their kids on hgh right now watch this watch this Anybody, anybody have anybody put put a one in the chat if you've watched the boys, the series The Boys on Amazon, or if you've watched Gen Gen Z, was it Gen V, Generation V? The basically the spin-off off the boys with the 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 young superheroes in college. Put a one in the chat if you watched uh any one of those series. Um so in 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 the boys what happens is the parents they found out that the reason why a lot of those kids had powers were the parents that put their kids on compound v compound v was the drug that gave kids powers gave them superpowers or it either manifest it either manifested in to uh them dying at an early early death or them developing powers anyway the parents were being selfish in terms of trying to see if they can make their kids if they can make their kids uh, uh something special and a lot of the and a lot of the times it ended up backfiring on the parents so for example the main character in the spinoff of the boys uh the girl the girl main character right she ended up accidentally killing her parents because her parents put her on compound V at birth and her powers manifested when she got her period, but her powers were blood, meaning she can control her blood, but she can make her blood a weapon. So when she was on her period, one time it got out of control and then <laughs> the blood that she was using, she accidentally killed her mother and her father. Right. And, um, <laughs> so i believe this there are stuff that parents are putting in their kids food to make them grow a certain way there's chemicals that they're putting on their kids to make them look a certain way right 
I think all of this is fucking up with kids' hormones on top of the foods that we're eating. And then people are wondering why these kids are coming out different. Or you got these you got these kids on all types of drugs at, at, at elementary school. And people can't put two and two together. The, a lot of the stuff, because you got these kids on these enhancements at such a young age, it's fucking with their hormones, bro. You know, I, I saw uh, something on Instagram. Hold on for a second. Let me, I saw something on Instagram. It's not going to be hard to find. It's, it should be the first thing that pops up because I saved it. I saved it. I saved it. I think. <laughs> no, I didn't, but it's on my story. It should be on my story. Should be on my story. Should be on my story. Let me see what's next. 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 Nope, it's not on my story. But I remember it was like a comedian where he was basically like, remember back in the day when we had like normal gay dudes? <laughs> Meaning like they were just like regular gay people. But now we got, he said, now we have these transformers. We got these intersect. We got like these kids just growing up different. You know what I mean? Like we got these kids taking all types of different types of drugs that a lot of them got. And they got, I'm talking about their parents gave them their, these drugs and they're just, they're growing up different. They're growing up feeling different. They don't understand the feelings that they have. They don't understand the hormone, the hormones when you're on TRT, right? These synthetic testosterones and all these things to boost your performance. It is, it's hitting the body different to where now you got these kids or these dudes. Now, maybe it might turn into feelings for the same sex. You never know. You never know. And on top of because Midnight Sun is right. He said, back then, gay dudes used to do masculine duties. Now we have femboys. Back in the day, we there were plenty of gay dudes that were still, you know, mechanics. They they knew how to change cars. <laughs> like they 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 did stuff. They were janitors, you know what I'm saying? They were they were weight power lifters. You know what I mean? They were still men. You couldn't fuck with these dudes. Now we have, we got dudes that are so gay now that they don't even like men. <laughs> like these guys are femboys that we got. These dudes, they're coming in no chest, just <laughs> I'm talking about no muscles at all. You just look, they're like, what is that? Is that even a dude? That's due to the foods we're eating. That's due to the the, um, the certain exercises that we're doing or not doing, or where you where guys for them to even get gains in the gym, they have to take synthetic, you know, TRT. A lot of dudes have to be on TRT at such a young age. It's like a a, a testosterone epidemic, right? And people are not putting two two and two together. Even like I, I even noticed this when I was like younger, where because b believe it or not, my voice has always been I, my voice is actually higher now. Believe it or not, my voice was actually deeper when I was younger. So I would say certain things or I would raise my voice a little bit and people would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. They, they would always think I'm doing too much. Even when I was just raising my I, I would raise my voice a little bit and people would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're doing too much. And I was like, what? But I had to realize, even though I wasn't yelling at anybody or I wasn't turning up, but just the natural, my natural projection of my voice is very, it's much more powerful than I gave it credit for. This is one of the reasons why, like, even on YouTube, what I do on YouTube, I pitch my voice up. <laughs> I do that shit on purpose. So I'm, I'm not sounding like Barry White and all these people. <laughs> so people don't fall asleep or people don't think I'm some scary ass ninja. Right. And it's even worse, like in public when I'm like. When I don't shave in public and I'm just out there, 
I look like one of those those trolls that's about to stick somebody up. <laughs> oh man. Gen V. Oh, exactly. Gen V. Gen V. Throat singing. It might be weird, but our ancestors usually have deep or masculine voices. I'll give you guys an example, though. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Um, Because, right, like what I'm doing right now, I'm straining my voice to make sure my voice is not sounding like fucking Barry White right now. But uh, let me give you an example because even a lot of, I'm talking about, I'm seeing grown men now at like age 30 and their voice, they sound fruity, but they're not gay. You know what I mean when I say that? Like their voice, Um, let me see. Men pop the balloon segment. Shit, hold on for a second. Because I saw one with like all, I saw the this pop the balloon segment with all dudes, and there's this tall ninja when he talks, but people thought that he was gay, but he's not. It's just that's how these dudes are sounding now when they're growing up. They don't have dudes now. They don't have a natural. A lot of these dudes don't have a natural uh ba uh base in most of these guys. Well, even if you have a higher pitched voice for example for example when you talk about these college coaches right the rick patinos in the, of the world these these people even though they have a high pitch it's a masculine voice a lot of these dudes sound like <laughs> sound like male fashion designers if you know what i'm saying right let me see because they, they they kept putting it on this man when he was talking let me see Right here. So this guy right here, I don't know, because he's been kind of going viral when he talks. So because he's uh he, when he was rejecting some of the girls. And rightfully so, because he was telling he was telling some of the girls, look, I don't trust you, whatever. But a lot of them were saying that he was gay because of how he talks. But what people don't understand is just the men today. That's just how they that's just how they were kind of raised to talk like that. You see. So listen how how this guy talks right here. So this is what a lot of women are even running into. Because just his mannerisms in general is going to be, even though he's most he's a lot of women's physical type in terms of they'll give him a chance they'll still be off put by his mannerisms because he seems like he's alternative lifestyle And unfortunately, too, because most men are now also growing up very soft spoken. Um, it just because like you're soft spoken now, most girls are just oh, this guy's fruity. But really, most men are just humbling themselves. You know, most men are told to, told to like tone it down. You know what I mean? That's what that's what happened to me when I was younger too. They just they would just tell you to tone it down. But really, they're just trying to um, take a, a a shot at your masculinity. 
He said, I had a homie like that. I thought he was a closet uh, camper. I was going to, oh, you know who's the perfect example? Because it's not, because the masculinity is not, uh, it's not about having a deep voice per se. It's about just, th just the way you project, just the way you project your voice. So for example, um, um, let me, like, uh, one of, one of those Italian guys, right? Like a lot of Italian guys, they have high pitched voices or guys from New York. They have like high pitch, uh, not a high pitch voice, but it's not necessarily, it's not like, uh, none of that, but it's masculine as hell. Cause when they talking to you, you feel like the, <laughs> you feel like you're getting shouted out. You, you get, uh, 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 being told what to do. And not in a sassy way, like, like whoa, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, damn, when they talking to you. Like, uh, uh, what's what's the guy from uh, Goodfellas? <laughs> uh, uh, Joe Pesci. Right? So just just that voice. But you can tell he this is a this is a masculine dude. So that that voice, right? Even though it's high pitched as hell, right? Kind of, but this is a masculine ass man. You know, this is not a fruit booty ninja. <laughs> this is no, this is no. You hear that voice, and it's high. It, I'm talking about it's high. It's higher than higher than mine. Higher than um. Higher, higher than shoot, it's higher than Frank Ocean's voice, but you know good and damn well, Joe Pesci ain't no uh booty bandit. You know good and damn well. Or when those Italian dudes start talking to you, you know they, they that, that none of that. They don't they they don't that that <laughs> you know. So Midnight Sun said, I had that issue too when I was younger. In my teens, I started to speak less because of that fruity tone and was too ashamed of, about it. Thankfully, I no longer have that tone anymore. And most likely it was just you were just soft spoken. Because there's a lot of that that was like I was soft spoken. But what what would happen to me? This this would be the glitch in me. What what would happen? Something would end up happening, right? Where I would have to start speaking out loud or I had to read out loud and then my real voice would come out. And then people wouldn't even <laughs> they would be like, oh shit, you actually have a very powerful voice, right? That's what would happen to me. Or some bullshit would happen. Like I remember when I was working um at a theater, and I feel so bad because I wasn't even trying to um I wasn't trying to scare nobody. I swear I was like, so usually when I approach customers, but particularly female customers, I'll come boom, boom. I don't know. So I remember I'll give you, I'll give you two examples, right? I'll give you two examples. I remember in the theater, you know, Sometimes you have those little kids acting crazy, talking a lot, and somebody's got to talk to them. Now, I remember I was, for some reason that day, I was already kind of pissed off about something. I don't remember what it was, but somebody somebody had pissed me off. It wasn't a customer. It was probably somebody I was working with. But one of the female customers came to the, the counter, and she was like, yo, Look, I'm not, I, I swear I'm not trying to be a Karen, but these these kids, they're they're talking over everybody. Everybody's getting tired of it. I don't even want to come out my seat, you know. And I was like, and for some reason, I already knew what group of kids it was. For some weird reason, I already knew who she was talking about. And I was like, oh, here we go. Right. But I didn't know that the supervisor was going to tell me to tell the kids to stop talking. Right. Cause I I don't want to deal with these these kids because these kids be talking back, right? But I came in and so so I'm like, why you took? I was so so I was so upset because it wasn't it was not necessarily that I was afraid of them talking back to me or start roasting me because you know I'm a small dude, 
right in general but um i've never had to reprimand people like that i've only had to reprimand kids right when i was like a sophomore and you know i was doing like community service for <laughs> <laughs> with some elementary school school kids of course they're gonna listen to me but now i never had to reprimand like teenagers that was my first time reprimanding teenagers as an adult at 19 years old so i then i go in there um i don't know maybe I, it was a little jekyll and hyde thing that that probably threw off the kids because i was just like oh is this i i came in soft i was like whoa is this the row that i'm hearing um so i ca i came in soft pause i was like is this the road i i keep hearing it's is multiple people talking about there's a lot of noise coming from that row from this row now the jackass <laughs> in the middle gave himself up by saying we didn't even do anything and then as soon as he did that i knew he was bullshitting and i knew he was the culprit and as soon as I heard him, my voice changed. Like it just changed right on cue. And it went from, excuse me, to look, bro, stop playing. Right off, like my voice changed right, boom, like right there. I wasn't even, I wasn't trying to act tough. I, I promise you. But it's just something switched in me as soon as the culprit basically gave himself up. And then my voice went from, excuse me to look bro bro stop playing if we hear anything from you again we're gonna have to kick your ass out bottom line all i hear is silence from the bitches sitting next to him <laughs> right them little young uh kids uh sitting next to him. these are like 13 14 year olds right little young kids sitting next to him silence from the rest of his uh peabody friends <laughs> sitting next to him i'm like okay I don't want to hear nothing else. All right. Or we're going to have to kick you out. Right. Didn't hear nothing else. Whatever. And I ended up recognizing those kids. I just don't think they thought my, that kind of voice was going to come out of me. Pause. Right. Because we had like we had like I remember we had like a, another big dude that was working with us. But he had a like he had a stuttering problem. Like he had like a really bad like uh, um, stuttering problem. Like like really, really, really bad. My, one of my boys, I don't want to say his name. He was cool as hell, though. Cool as hell. But like his like he had a really bad. So the reason why they the reason why now I re recognize the reason why they had asked me to reprimand the, the kids at that specific time is because. I think at the time, I don't know if Ainsley's in the chat, but, <laughs> but at the time, I had a reputation for being a brunt, uh, what's the a blunt person, of uh, being a very blunt person, not necessarily a person that talked trash, but somebody that's very blunt and straight to the point. And Ainsley said it in the chat when he was <laughs> when when he would be in, in my chat sometimes. So um, at at any given time, I could be very blunt. So that was the reputation that I had at my job at the time. So that's why they had called me to reprimand those kids. And my adult voice basically came out of nowhere, just like that. And it wasn't, I wasn't trying. It was just really something snapped in me because imagine you go in there and you're just saying, look, I'm hearing noise. It was almost like a, 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 a segment of cops, right? On AJ's channel, right? <laughs> a cops cam. And they go up to the group and you're just like, I'm hearing noise. And the guy... <laughs> gives himself up just like we wasn't even saying and i was like bro <laughs> as, as soon as you do that now i know it's you now i know it's you cause uh, uh, uh being loud and shit you know what i mean so that's when i realized this is the problem that i have dealing with people because first of all i'm not a good conversationalist and then second of all my voice will just change you know what i mean like my voice will just change and so that's that's the problem usually. So I, I really had to learn how to control my voice. And this is, you know, this is the good thing about, you know, podcasting. I've really learned how to control, you know, the tone of my voice, how to, you know, trying to, you know, how to talk. I remember working at Home Depot, like really um, helped me in terms of 
learning how to talk to people, believe it or not. That's why I give a lot of credit to working at Home Depot because the manager or the supervisor there, he always encouraged me to like not just be a guy, even if I'm like just checking stuff out for for people, just don't be just a next. All right. It just don't say just ask about people, how their day is going and shit like that. Like, it's really hard for me to start combos. But after working with Home Depot, it was easier for me to talk to people after that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, voice control, you know, and all that, all that stuff. It's it, it could be it could be a game changer. Um. He said, oh, you're a <laughs> pyro said, oh, you're an honest person. Like at the time. Well, because here's the thing, because. I don't know if you remember, I, Pyro, I don't know if you remember Ainsley in the chat, because I, I was like, Ainsley was there when I was working, and <laughs> and, he, and he said in the chat, I, I was just a very blunt person. It's just, at the time, because at the time, this is when I started watching, around that time, this was the first, because when I was working there, 2017, you know, um, and then... I left 2019 during that time. That's when I started listening to, you know, Corey Holcomb in 2017, 2016. Right. Um, Tom, like this is when I really started getting this information. So I remember like even like in 2017, but particularly in 2018. When I really started real, I started finding out what these IG models were doing and I would talk about certain things out loud at my job which i was not supposed to be doing but i was saying a lot of this stuff and other people started catching on that that wasn't it, it wasn't <laughs> it was not a good idea it was not it was that was not a good idea man <laughs> so at the time ainsley knew me right he knew me as a blunt person you know what i mean because I was saying a lot of this this stuff. I was talking about the IG models. I was talking about I remember look, dude, like biggest example. I remember um it was a, a real spad bad Spanish bitch came through at the theater, right? In front of everybody. And a real spad span and he was she was walking next to this dude, um, Caucasian dude probably like 5'10", 5'11". The girl was probably like 5'9", right? But she was also wearing heels. And there were dudes uh, gawking at her. And they were like, man, why is she with that dude? What? How? What he? I, I know he ain't doing this and blah, blah, blah. And this, the manager was right next to me when I said this, too. Because I didn't really get like whether the manager was here or not, I would I would just basically speak my mind if asked. So when people just like when everybody was like, yo, how how is he with that bitch? Whatever, she's a bad bitch. And I was like, look, these college bills ain't gonna pay itself. <laughs> but I was like, I I was like when I said it, like it's it's funny now that I say, say it, but when I said it at the time, when I was like, Man, these I said the college isn't gonna pay itself. <laughs> you know, I was basically insinuating that she was a sugar baby, right? And but when I said it, I just said it like just so seriously and I moved on. <laughs> and the manager, it was a we had a female, we had we had a lot of managers, but this was a female manager that we had, and she was like, Chris, what the <laughs> now, mind you, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. Apparently, one of the dudes at the uh, the ticket stand, he did recon on the girl. He found out information about the girl that was with that dude. He saw that girl at graduation, <laughs> like two or three, four months later, like graduation. I shit you not. I shit you not. I, I forgot if she was at the community college graduation or at the uh, UConn stanford graduation I, I forgot which one but she was they found her they the dude found her at graduation with her papers i said look i'm telling you man i said bro college ain't gonna pay itself she know what she doing out there <laughs> he said make more assert yeah more assertive on your standards 
just an opinion, but I do think speaking in a tone aggressive is how we men start to get them. Yeah, when you put in a situation that's flight or flight or fight, now a lot of men failed that test. I failed that test many a times too. But it'll, it'll be it'll, it'll, it'll it's 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 shocking when your man when your man voice comes out. It's it's shocking when it when it happens. I kind of felt bad when it, when that happened though, because I. I didn't have any hate for the kid. I swear, I swear on my life, I didn't have any hate for the kid. It's just I just knew he was bullshitting. I just I just knew I knew right there he was bullshit. First of all, I knew he was the culprit because you doth protest a little bit too much, right? So I was like, "You're the culprit, bro. <laughs> stop, stop bullshitting. Stop wasting everybody's time. I don't want to have to come back here because." You guys are the only ones talking in a row. Everybody else is trying to watch a movie, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Reaper said, what What we're speaking on tonight? Well, I was just because it was just, I was just speaking on sports just in general, <laughs> just in general. So I was just talking. I, I wanted to speak on specifically and I already did, but uh, on um, Cam Newton. And how. He's like the most, he was one of the most hated athletes. I don't get why, but, um, and then, oh yeah, that's why this, this is how this, this conversation, um, veered off because I was talking about how there was a lot of fruit booty, uh, fruit, fruit, uh, 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 fruity allegations surrounding Cam Newton, but I was saying that he was not the only one. And then it veered off into how today's men are vo are speaking voice, you know. Um, a lot of like the men, the men coming up now have softer, soft, soft, uh, softer voices, or they're just so more softly spoken than the men in the past. So, if like you can be as a man, you can actually be a way more ahead of the game if your voice is not necessarily it doesn't even have to be necessarily masculine it could just be just deeper just being just having a deeper voice in general can help you out in a lot of cases which has helped me out a lot of cases and i'm not a fighter i'm the softest person you'll find <laughs> like hold up i'm talking about physically i'm not trying to be in no fight dude i'm five seven barely 150 pounds barely barely 150 pounds and when I say I'm five, I'm talking about I'm five, seven, seven without shoes, without shoes. I'm five, seven. That's my height. I'm barely 150 pounds. I don't like the like I used to be ripped when I was in high school, in college. I'm out of shape. Both of my shoulders are busted. I my my both of my knees are shot. I, I can't be fighting nobody. I'm going to I'm talking about if I were to get into a scuffle, I'm I'm going to get seriously hurt <laughs> like I need like I need surgery on my on my um on my left shoulder. And on top of on top of that, oh, V also brought it up because I had a theory because I was saying that um the reason why our generation of men, particularly Gen Z millennial men have are a little bit softer, but we're bigger. At the same time, pause is because we're taking so much chemicals. You got a lot of kids in the suburbs that were put on HGH at a younger age. We have people taking a lot of chemicals, uh, a lot of doing a lot of chemical changes to our body to gain certain advantages. Um, and I compared it to how in the the Amazon Prime TV series. Um, what's 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 it called? Uh, the boys and Gen V, right? The kids that had superpowers, what they found out is that their parents injected them with Compound V when they were babies, just to see if they would develop any gifts in the future. And it was really selfish on the parents' ends, just to see if their kids would come out special. And a lot of the times it ends up backfiring on the parents. And I think this is similar is similar things are happening here right now. If that makes sense. That's basically how we ended up veering into, you know, masculine voices, your speaking voice and all that stuff. 
<laughs> Pyro said, I'm skinny as hell from high school to adulthood. Yeah, like same here. I'm super skinny too. But it's like like me, I was actually like at one point I was in like the best shape of my life. Like I was in like great, I was in great shape in high school. Even when I got sidelined with injury for a long time, but I was still in great. I'm talking about I was in great shape. I was like, I've oh, I'm talking about since I will say since middle school, I've always been in great shape. Even like um in the beginning stages of college, now my body is really breaking down, meaning I'm talking about um I'm talking I'm talking I'm telling you both of my shoulders are busted my my particularly my left shoulder I think it's dislocated it's just I'm just like I and I have like nerve damage I just don't really want to <laughs> go to the doctor about it yet because I'm still doing things out here that I need both shoulders like I can still survive out here but if I get into a fight I'm beat I'm beat every time I play soccer I got to wear uh shoulders a shoulder sleeve that covers both of my arms if not i'm really putting my shoulders at at risk both of my shoulders both of my knees are shot you know what i mean but yeah <laughs> he said my knees are in terrible because yeah like so yeah i had in was it my june yeah my before in the summer before my junior year of college i tore my acl and my meniscus in my right knee. So I was sidelined for a long, 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 long time. I was still in great shape, though, because even then I was allowed to run after like, what, two or three, four months, but after the surgery, but, but yeah, like I'm in, I'm in terrible shape. So I need a chiropractor for my shoulder. I don't know what how, what what to do to fit because because when I when I remember when I had thought I had dislocated my shoulder when I was playing a, 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 a small sided game, right? And it's like I played a small sided game and I thought I dislocated it just popped my shoulder just popped out right and it fell back into place right. But then I, I go to the emergency room and then they did the x-rays, but they said, oh, there's nothing wrong with my shoulder. I'm like, are you serious? Like, I felt it dislocate, but my shoulder has been getting weaker and weaker ever since 2022, like January 2022. So I don't know. Maybe I, I need I need something. So Midnight Sun says back in 2018, I traveled to my homeland for the first time in Guatemala during the two weeks. There, I lost weight very quickly, and the food there tastes very natural. The U.S. food here is trying to kill you. Exactly. So that's facts. The food here in America is poison. We're like we're we're in we're eating poison here in the United States, and that's what's that's what's doing us in. Like most do most people now, we're eating foods that most most of us can't even hold down in our stomachs. That's what I'm finding out. And what's interesting is we're still really overweight, which I which I don't understand how that works. <laughs> I don't get it, but we're still sup superbly overweight. And then on top of that, what ha what happens is you you'll I'm talking about you'll see this from women and men. Women and men. What happens is with women and men, they'll travel They'll leave the United States and they'll stay in like like a Japan or, or or where you were at Guatemala, right? Or you'll you'll be just somewhere else, or you'll go to uh, Italy, right? And you'll eat more overseas, but you'll lose more weight, and you'll just you you it, 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 they'll just be like, what what is going? It's the food. The food is. Something is cr something's up with the food here in the, in the states, and I've really been feeling the the effects of it really since twenty, I'll say twenty thirteen twenty fourteen. Something is up with the food. It's not. It's it's 
And then you'll have people talking about, especially then you'll have women talking about, oh, I don't cook. And I'm like, you. I think even cooking your own food, it doesn't even save you no more. Not, not here in the United States. So now imagine that doesn't even save you anymore. Now imagine how most people are just, they can't even cook their own food. They're just buying fast food every other day. Of course, we got these, we got people on Oopa Loopa status here. But what happens is they'll travel, they'll travel overseas, they'll eat more, but lose more weight. Now, on now there's a a bigger reason behind that, right? Because you'll you'll go to these places in Europe, they always have trains, people walk everywhere. Like in Italy, you gotta walk everywhere, right? Um, yeah, these there, there's place there's places where it, or Japan, you walk, people walk. You know what I mean? People walk and they walk very fast, you know, so that's that's a that's a that's a that's another thing. Like the America. Yeah, America, the food is hard. to. First of all, the in America, the food is hard to hold down. That's why I don't get how it is like that. And then on top of that, people gain the most weight by eating the food here in America. I don't understand how that works. Now, mind you, I've you, you, I remember, you know, I went to Haiti for a trip. You know what I mean? Could I could hold the food down, but apparently I have, I, I, I don't know. It's it's weird. It's it's weird. You go to you go to I'll, I'll, or I'll go to another place overseas, and. I'm <laughs> like the food, like if the food actually fills you up, the food will actually fill, fill you up, but you won't even really gain weight off that food, you know, or you're like the fruits, the fruits overseas, it's, it tastes sweeter and it's actually natural. Like I remember, um, I remember Corey Holcomb was talking about uh, 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 how a, a, a Caucasian couple came up to him and they just happened to have a conversation about just the foods that we eat here in the United States compared to the fruits overseas. And he was basically saying he saw it was a, it was a Caucasian couple and how. He said like the woman wasn't in tears because she said like she was finally eating fruits where now she can see better in like <laughs> more than 20, 30 years. This bitch was, he said the bitch was about to cry. <laughs> I was like, what? Now, look at the dynamics of this. You got a Caucasian couple talking to a big black dude at the airport, evangelizing to him about the fruits. <laughs> Talking about they was about to, he talking about the bitch was about to cry and just said, "Think, man, I've this like this has been so life changing. Something's wrong with the food here, dog. Like I'm talking about something criminally wrong with the food here. Something is criminally wrong with the food here in the United States. Like, like there needs to be, but obviously there it clearly is because you'll have these countries like Russia." Like you, you'll have all these countries where the ingredients that we have that we use for certain chips and foods and whatnot, they're banned in other countries. Do you have pro I'm talking about Mount Mountain Dew is banned in a lot of countries. Frosted flakes banned in these countries. And we just eat these things. We consume these things like it's nothing. It's the most popular things that we have. Mountain Dew, Frosted Flakes. They have the like the the, the, the list of these things. And we just we just still consume it, you know. It's <sighs> midnight sun anywhere particular is better than the U.S. This is why I say the passport bros are winning because what what they're doing is I, I believe the way the, the the food that they're giving to us it's it's criminal, it's criminal. And just you living in the suburbs and going to certain supermarkets, that doesn't save you anymore. 
Like the only way where you can guarantee your health is if you're only strictly getting food from the farmer's market when they have these farmer market carnivals or festivals and you're just getting all your stuff from there. But even even then, that's not that that ain't no guarantee. That like you got, especially you have animals being genetically grown. Genetically, you have meat now being grown in labs. We have ge- genetically modified meat. I'm talking about lab grown meat. What? Chick fil A just sneaking in there. Oh yeah, we're we're using a different type of chicken. What do you mean a different type of chicken? Well, I'm not going to Chick fil A. <laughs> Shit. Now. I guess with me, low key, I can eat whatever I want because I didn't realize this about my body until later on. Chad Ochocinco has this thing where he just only eats McDonald's just to 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 see if he can try to beat science. But I know what he's trying to say because there are the way my body is built. It it really is just about gaining calories so I can recover. So, because I play, because when you play, when you're playing soccer, or if you're running track, or if you're doing swimming, it really doesn't matter what you eat. You just you have to make sure the calories you're getting the calories back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I didn't realize that about my body until later on, but it was a bit too late. And now that that was the reason why, because I I used to think I was eating healthy in high school. I thought, oh, I'm eating salad. I'm eating apples and all this stuff. So why am I still getting hurt? Why am I still? But I realized my bo- the, the way my body works, it just takes food indifferently. It really doesn't matter what I eat. It really doesn't matter. It's a, for me, for me specifically, it's about getting the calories back in no matter, no matter the cost. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I found that out a little bit too late. So I'll like I'll be like right now, like even it'll be after a normal workout or well, not I don't work out. I mean like a normal soccer session or a normal basketball session, because I just burn fat more than the nor- the average person. I just burn fat more than the average person. The first thing I do is make sure I gain all those calories back. And it's not just through getting just a, a milkshake or a protein bar. It's like really getting some food. Like I'll just order some Chinese food or I'll just order something. I'll order something. I ja- go to the Japanese food and get like a whole thing. Well, like I remember like when I would um, play basketball at the mall, this helped a lot for me. I'll go at the mall, then I'll go straight to the Japanese sushi spot where they make the food right in front of you, even though that's still not healthy. But to all those calories, I gain them back and then some. You know what I mean? So yeah, the, even the fruits and veg like the fruits and vegetables that we have is not even healthy here. So this is when I say it doesn't even matter what you eat, really, in the United States. It really doesn't matter what you eat. <laughs> most because most of the stuff is poison. That's why I ended up finding out. That's why I was like, oh, this is why Chad Ocho Seco be saying it really don't matter what you eat. It's just a matter of just getting those calories back. Now, I just make sure that my recovery food, there's no soda in there, you know, but I'll say this. I remember I used to drink so much soda when I was younger and I would never get hurt. But when I started cutting it out, all of a sudden I had problems. So it's not necessarily just. Oh, just cut the soda out and your your life will be now. It really doesn't matter what you eat as long as if, if you're a person you're running every day like running but the problem is it's like you have to run like overseas you can just walk since you can just walk everywhere you're already burning off those calories anyway so for the only way for you to like where the food is not affecting you where you're gaining weight you have to be like sprinting every day but you really shouldn't have to be literally putting your your body in that much physical duress only so you so you can feel healthy. That's it's not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be able to just walk and just be regular and still be able to eat a normal meal and not feel weary or not feel sick. So for me to not feel sick, I literally have to put my body through like physical like duress when I'm when I'm doing sports and really 
get a good workout in so where the food doesn't affect me in a negative way. Midnight Sun says, I think the gov the government is not telling us we're having a population problem because why else trying to ban meat in California and trying to introduce us to bugs? Just my yeah, they're just they're just they're just poisoning us. I think they're just like it's 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 weird. It's weird. I don't I don't understand their plan. <laughs> I don't understand their plan. <laughs> I kind of do, though. I kind of do. And by the way, let me um I know this is supposed to be sports, but let me let me go in on the conservatives a little bit. Because the conservatives, they don't point they tend not to point their fingers at the right people. Right? They don't they don't understand what's what's going on, particularly when it comes to People don't like I don't understand why people don't understand. They don't understand why. Oh, the re, they don't understand why we have they're they're letting immigrants across the border. Of course, they're letting immigrants across the border. America is built off of cheap labor. Right. So America. Let me repeat that again. America is America's like greatest corporations. They're built off of cheap labor. Now, to keep them going. You have to keep cheap labor going. You can't just have the laborers being paid well enough, only well enough for them to go back to work. So our American population, right? We're not even producing the, we're not, like I'm talking about when we're talking about the dominant Caucasian race. Right. When we're talking about uh, Caucasians in general, they're they're not even they're not birthing enough kids at replacement level. The kids that are there, they don't really want to they either don't want to work or they want to live off the government. Right. Or if they do or if they are working these these do jobs, they always want higher pay. And on top of that, they're not making babies. And on top of that, they they not make more money. Of course, they, now they're like, okay, how how can we uh keep these corporations going because they don't want to lose the, the the people that make that Google, Amazon, all these things. They want to still make their money. So it's and like I said, they don't really need all that money, but it's just that that corporate greed that they got. So of course they're gonna let the immigrants come over. And it's not because necessarily, oh, they work harder than the average American, but they know they can get cheaper labor out of them. And on top of that, they're going to reproduce and to keep this uh, system going. You know what I mean? So this is why they're they're doing this. So you'll have like the con the conservatives. They'll point their fingers at everybody else. Right. But then I'll be like, okay, Mr. Conservative man, how how many kids does your uh your supposedly trad con wife have? Oh, uh, we only have one kid. Or they'll be like, well, I married a stepmother. She already had a kid, and she said one is enough. So and I'm like, so exactly. You guys are not even close to, to replacement level. That's why they're trying to replace you, because really your role was to be ch cheap labor as well, but. You, you guys are doing something different. You guys now they have uh, these these office jobs, which is barely above the labor jobs. <laughs> but they're going to replace that with AI in, in, a, in a minute. Right. So they really you're, you're really not needed anymore. Now what they need is the cheap labor jobs. And you guys are not going to take them because you think it's underneath you. So we're going to allow these people to just come across the border because they're going to take that temporarily so it could keep our numbers up so who's really at fault here not really the not even the immigrants are not even at fault even the crazy ones they're not even at fault it's really the corporate greed that we have up top now to say they're wrong for having corporate uh, for the for the people up top to be greedy who knows 
because I believe if the poor people in this country and the rich people in a country, if they switched places, nothing would change. So I, I'm, it's not even a morality problem. I'm just telling you, I would just just tell the average track con you, you're just you're, you're pointing your fingers at the wrong people. Pyros, uh, my Midnight Sun says you're right on that thing, but uh, he's talking to Pyro though. He said you're right on that thing, but you see more wealthy people having more kids and having more access to food while working, and poor class are getting by. Actually, that's not true. Wealthy, the wealthier population, they're not having kids at replacement level. Poor people are having kids, but particularly poor, poorer brown. Right. Not necessarily black kids because uh, black women are deleting their kids at <laughs> at nauseum. But you got. Uh, right. You have the uh, people of Mexican, the Central American, South American descent. They're procreating at a rapid rate. Uh, they're they're uh, the his the Hispanic population is going to be the majority like in what, 20, 30 years. Right. Like the wealthy people are not even they're they're not they're not they're not procreating at replacement level and but what you, what you're having is let me see let me see what you see but you, know, you were talking about the access so like yeah they have a the wealthy people and the kids that they procreate that are procreate uh, that 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 come from it they're having access to a better life access to better health it's a but it's a really small class and it's actually getting smaller and smaller it's actually getting smaller and smaller don't believe that 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 like like you know but i i yeah i see i see what you're saying though because i don't i don't i don't because the 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 stats are showing that particularly when you're talking about caucasian people or you're talking about the South Koreans in South uh, South Korea, the J Japanese in J J uh, Japan. Look what's happening to Japan now. They're allowing they're 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 letting the immigrants come through. Why? Because they, they can't. <laughs> they're not replacing the the normies are not replacing at replacement level. They they just they, uh, the the women there just don't want to have kids. So now they're just letting the immigrants go go over there. To see what 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 can come through, but nothing good can really come through from that long term, in my opinion. And that's not talk. I'm not trying to talk down on the Africans coming through, on the immigrants coming through in Japan, or anybody else coming through. On it's just <laughs> Japan had had a certain way their their culture, right? It's gonna be it's gonna be different now. Their culture is gonna be different now, right? Japan. That's why they're letting the immigrants come through. the The normies are not replacing each other at replacement level. They're at a negative uh, decline population. When you look at Italy, Italy's going to start. Uh, they're already doing it, but it, people talk about how based, quote unquote, based the uh, uh, the uh, the the female Italian prime minister is. Look, she's going to have to start accepting immigrants soon, homie. You know that Italy didn't produce up they didn't have one birth in three months in Italy. Do you know that? I'm not I'm not trying to make people look dumb here. I'm just I'm just saying in Italy they had zero births in three months. Did you guys know this? I'm not making this up. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Let me not search that up on Twitter. That's irresponsible of me. Italy has had zero births in three months right here. Let 
Low fertility trap. Why Italy's failing birth rate is causing alarm. So right here. Italy, a country once known for its big families gathered around the dinner table, is facing a crisis of unparalleled proportions. For the first time, the number of births in a year fell below 400,000, representing an average of 1.25 babies per woman, according to the official figures for 2022. This means the replacement rate is now negative since the number of deaths currently exceeds the number of births. 12 deaths for every seven births. And I remember, uh, hold on for a sec. I remember, uh, somebody was trying to tell me, uh, <laughs> and I, and I was, I was like, wait, so what are they finna do about this? And somebody had brought up the prime minister for some reason. And somebody in the comment section had defended her and said, well, she has three kids. And somebody replied back. He was just like, nah, that's rookie numbers. <laughs> He said, those are rookie numbers. <laughs> and, and what people don't understand, you know, back in the day, like it was pretty normal for like the average woman to have like six, seven kids. <laughs> people don't even realize like, it was pretty normal. Like, I'm not saying that was like the average, but it was pretty normal to see a family to, to like see like a family of like eight a family of eight or nine. It was like normal to see something like that. Like it was normal to see a plus 10, 10 plus siblings in a family. It was normal, not saying it was most, but it was normal to see something like that. Cause it was pretty common back in the day. Women would have like literally six kids. Like it was nothing five, five kids minimum. It would be like five kids min minimum that woman would have kids so when people would so <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot it was just like ah nah yeah it's that bad and oh yes 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 zero births in italy let me search that up for y'all right here sky news australia right here because i think i i don't know if i played this video before but man i remember do you know who gave me that information Our society i don't know if you guys remember lorette in the chat lorette sometimes she comes in in the chat she she'd be in and out a lot of the stuff that you guys see on here she'd be putting me up on game on this stuff when she showed me this stuff talking about there's th three months of zero births <laughs> so when you see stuff like this now, all of a sudden, you're going to get, trust me, then three to four or five years time, they're going to start sneaking, letting the immigrants sneak in, uh, sneaking in here. They they do this on purpose. Unless you're just going to let your country just die out. <laughs> you're going to see more ninjas. Look, you know how like in Italy, they'll be like, it was like only Balotelli on the Italy national team. And then. Or it would be like Agbana or Moazikin. It would be like one black person on the Italian national football team. I'm telling you, in about five years flat, you're going to see more black players on that Italy team. <laughs> I'm talking about from immigrant fam families. That's what's going to happen. It's not it's not going to be. <laughs> you're going to see you're going to see you're going to see ninjas on that team. You already see uh, Japan. They already got. Already had a ninja starting for them in at, at goalie. This is this is this is gonna be the norm. And on top of that, like I said, women don't really want to have kids like they used to. Italy's national birth rate has fallen to its lowest level on record. In Sicily, demographers warn that the shrinking population could drag the country into an unprecedented economic crisis. And its economy is collapsing with it. Situation that is their debt to GDP level currently sitting at around 150%, the second highest in the eurozone. Now, the European Commission has warned Italy it will launch disciplinary steps over the country's growing debt. Yes, I said that third time in a decade. Italy's economy has slipped into recession. Over 24% of Italy's population is over 65. 
and this number is only rising. We're not the first one to mention this. Italy's very own health minister is also worrying about this. She's quoted saying that Italy is a Italy is a dying country, says minister as birth rate plummets. And I'll say this, that whole um, C-19 stuff, that didn't help. That didn't help, too. That whole thing where they were just killing off the old people and stuff like that, that didn't help either. So Italy, like, they're like, they're di it's a dying country. It's a dying country. Italy's about to be woke in a minute, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you. People don't, like, I don't know why people don't see this. Anytime you you have, like, where, where they, they can't replace the normies at replacement level, this is where they let the immigrants come in. It's pretty obvious what the, the, the move is. Like, because I, uh, I, I don't know. Because I remember the 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 trad cons were trying to say that um, the Italy prime minister, uh, she was based. I mean, I guess, <laughs> I, I guess. Well, I'm not like Italy isn't a woke like a quote unquote woke country, but it's going to be. It's going to be, meaning they're going to let the immigrants come. They're just going to let them come through. Or they're gonna make it. They're gonna make it look like, man, they're sneaking in, I and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this, this is how they. This is how they do it. They're just gonna. They're gonna make it look like that. They're just sneaking in, and we don't know how to stop it. But really, they're letting them in. <laughs> they're, 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 they're letting them in. Same way in America, they're just, they're just open about it in America. They're just letting them in. Obviously, they're just, they're, they're saying we're letting them come in, but. In these other countries, they're just gonna act like, oh, we 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 don't know what's going on, but they're they're letting they're letting them come through, they're letting them come through. These you got these countries that are built off of these you know these so called great societies. They're built off of cheap labor. That's how it's built off, and to keep these things going, you need people to continue that kind of work. AI can't replace everything, guys. They can't replace everything. Because <laughs> you need the people. You need people. You need people. So they're just letting them come through. And people are going to be. <laughs> they might. I'll say this. Like, if you see. Okay, I'll, I'll give I'll give the conservatives this. I'll give them this. This. If you see, like, the. Uh, if she goes like if the minister goes missing or something like that, or she mysteriously dies of an illness or whatever, then you'll be like, yep. Yeah. Then you can basically just come back to me and just be like, oh, Chris, I see what they're doing now. And then I would have to apologize. Well, yeah, the, now the agenda is on because she will probably be like, no, we can't allow these people across the border. And then they're going to be like, damn, we're going to have to make a move here. <laughs> oh, man. Like I said, like babe, women don't really want babies anymore. Women don't want kids. Women don't really, because now that they have the choice, women don't really want kids. So that whole uh, idea of women being natural nurturers, I had a conversation with a woman uh, uh, last night on a uh, Twitter panel. Off uh, uh with red red pill Luffy's uh Twitter panel. And when I had said, you know, women are modern day trial traffickers, and she was she kind of dismissed my point where she was like, Well, women have kind of always been like that. It's just now the veil is <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so really everything that she had said is what I said too, where women don't really want kids like that. If given a choice, they don't want kids. They don't want it. And now that they have the option, they're just like, please, um, because now because you, you hear what women are saying, oh, you got to pay me this and blah, 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 for me to even consider. To, and... <laughs> you know. So that's what's happening. 
So you need people to keep busting to keep the economy going. <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Literally, phys like physically and physically. <laughs> They're going to have to bust in the economy and they need to bust in, you know. <laughs> Yo, that's what, you know, that's what it is. Italy's a dying country. But I, I will say this. What's happening to Italy? Um, All I'm going to say is this. <laughs> I'm not going to say I saw it coming, but. I knew something was going to end up happening to Italy eventually. I can't go into details why I think that. It might be a bit personal, but I knew something like this eventually was going to happen to Italy. I knew it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, man. Let's see if we can end this off with a sports take. I don't know if I can. Oh, yeah. But by the way, by the way, I want I want people because, you know, I don't mind listening to people that I, I might not agree with everything. But they, I like people that that will challenge my viewpoints of certain things. So if you guys get the chance, follow Red Pill Vegeta on Twitter. Follow um, Red Pill Luffy, I believe. I want to get these guys on my panel so bad, <laughs> but particularly Red Pill. Vegeta. He ha he has a YouTube. He has a YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know how off. Oh, don't, dude. Oh man, they already shut down his, dude. So hey, guys, if you guys are starting a YouTube channel, don't be surprised if your if your stuff gets like demonetized or they start taking down your videos. You know what I mean? They they. Damn, they're already doing my man dirty. Red Pill Vegeta had like, the last time I checked, he had like 200 and something subscribers. He had just started his YouTube thing. He got to start over all over. You got it, man. YouTube be wilding with this stuff, man. They, they, I think there's people... Because on top of that, you have people that be reporting your video that you have no idea. That's what happens to a lot of people. And I, I hope uh, what Undead Chronic, what he needs to do, he needs, he needs to look into because Undead be going at people on Twitter. And what happens is, and I think this is what happened to Red Peel Vegeta because his YouTube is linked to his Twitter, right? You're going to, Undead Chronic is going to say what he says. And you're gonna have these 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 uh feminazi demons try to dox you. They're gonna try to look for who you are via YouTube or try to look for your LinkedIn or whatever, and they're going to keep reporting your shit until your shit is canceled. That's what the, that's what these that's what these 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 three oh fours do. Pyro says, I went on Twitter and I saw a post on Twitter that a woman gave her five-year-old daughter to a drug dealer because she owned him $200 and he took the kid and graped and offlined her. Yeah, and that's what, um, because like, I'll say this, the woman in question, when I said women were, were modern day child traffickers, she was literally, she, she dismissed it as, well, women have been kind of been doing this forever i'm like i know but isn't this kind of shouldn't we shouldn't that be the focus instead of just bashing on fresh even though he was an idiot but shouldn't we be focusing on look at how what happened to anthony edwards these nba players and now look at fresh where 
the DMs are coming out where now these chicks are all of a sudden they're they're pro life now conveniently <laughs> when a person of status or a person of perceived uh status knocks them up now all of a sudden they want to keep their kids when they've been telling everybody they hate kids you know what i mean now it's like but she was literally like look this is what women do and i was kind of mad at first that she dismissed it but now that you mentioned stories like that i took it the wrong way in terms of just thinking that she dismissed she's just telling the truth women are child traffickers <laughs> they're just they're, they're child traffickers and it's maybe I just have to accept it. And that's a that's a tough pill to swallow. <laughs> oh yeah, by the oh yeah, by the by the way, like yeah, v, V's uh hitting hitting me up with the fight club references because there's a lot of dudes, and I made this mistake. We get into the space, we we come up on some information, we see the stories in real life, and we want to. And, but for some reason, there's something in us that we want to tell our coworkers about this stuff. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I said, what was it number one rule of Fight Club? Don't talk about Fight Club. I be hearing do, like dudes in the space. They'll watch one or two Kevin Samuels videos, and they <laughs> they want to share. They want to share the shit to the world. They want to be RP evangelists. I like to call them. And I've been through that stage. I remember, you know, in 2016, 2017, when I was listening to Corey Holcomb for the first time in his 5150 show, and I wanted to share the information. <laughs> I wanted to share the jokes, the, the abortion jokes that he was doing and all that stuff. Like, I, I understand that. But... <laughs> oh, man. Let me see. Are you serious? Pyro, are you serious? Red Pill Vegeta, is he the guy that sounds like Vegeta? Yes, son, it was back in. Undead Chronic on this 1K channel. It's just, it's like, so what, what the reason, what happens is that's why I'm not going to link my YouTube to my Twitter. I'm not going to do it because what happens is you'll say something on Twitter and I know Undead Chronic, he be going in on Twitter, but what happens is they try, they're, they try to find out who you are. They, I'm talking about, they go out, these women will go out their way to find out who you are. I showed you. Remember, I showed you my Instagram profile, right? I showed you my Instagram profile. And these bitches went through all my posts just because one, and I'm talking about, I didn't even at, I didn't even tag them. These bitches came out of nowhere just because I said something they didn't like. And I didn't even, I talk, I swear on everything, I did not tag these people. They they saw me say something I didn't like, and then they went through my whole profile and start talking crazy. The the girl that I showed you that went through my bass, my when I was doing my my bass cover, my bass guitar cover, and was talking crazy. Remember when I showed that? I did not tag this woman when I was talking about my Bill Cosby thing. And I, when I was trying to tell those young kids, like, yo, you guys don't understand what's going on with this Bill Cosby. I didn't even tag her. She saw me get so much engagement off my comment and me arguing with the people in the comments. She, I'm talking about, she wasn't even part of the, the thread. She wasn't even part of the thread, bro. And she was talking, I'm talking about spamming my page. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> so that's what happens. But particularly when you're talking about Twitter, you have these feminazis, you got these single moms on Twitter, social media. You say some some things about them or whatever. And I know Chronic, he be he be on some roast on some roasting. He just he'll he'll roast somebody. They'll 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 they will not take it well because, you know, Chronic be talking about uh, <laughs> women's V card and how they loose. <laughs> and like I said, women, they they really be. And that's what I, I would I would advise men don't talk about women being loose only because they are very sensitive about it. They won't admit this, but they're very sensitive about it so much. So they will lie. They they they'll gaslight people talking about that's not how the vagina works. It snaps back and you guys just have little pricks. No, you, you can get loose. <laughs> you can you can get loose, but they don't want to hear it. 
they don't want to hear it. And I'm like, they, 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 they don't, they don't want to hear it. So I, I tell you, I tell dudes, be careful with that. But like I said, if you're going in on somebody via Twitter, they're, they're going to look for who you are. They're going to try to dox you. There was somebody in this space that recently got doxxed. I forgot his name, but he recently got doxxed. And I'm talking about dude got fired from his job and all this, this you know, that, that's, you know, it's, this is, this is what, this is what the feminazis do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Midnight son. I just saw your, your comment. Amen. He said these single moms need to start using their phone to learn how to cook for their kids instead of bashing a dude for his opinion. <laughs> Man, if I, church, 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 I wish, man, I wish I need, I need to, I need to have a, a, a church sound bite. That, that is church right there. These bitches can do all, <laughs> spend all their energy and time trying to find out who you are. I'm talking about going out of their way. And you're just like, what, what in the, f don't, don't, don't y'all bitches got nothing else to do, <laughs> but try to dox people that because they said something you didn't like. I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? They got nothing else to do but to do that. And you're just you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you know, I should have blocked her. But if this has happened on three separate occasions on my Instagram profile where I think sorry, two. I think I think either two or three separate occasions where a user would find a comment that I had. It would be a comment that I wrote down. Right. And I'm talking about they're not even a part. The person that will stalk me is they're not even a part of the thread that I commented on. So I'm thinking it's going to be somebody part of my thread that's looking through my. It's not. It's not somebody a part of my thread. It's just they're they're looking on and they're just trying to find something on you. You're just like yo, you you are y'all are are some weirdo type shit, bro. Y'all are some type weird um weird weirdo type shit, man. Oh yeah, and also, um, I don't I don't argue with black women anymore because they get turned on by it. It's 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 the weirdest shit ever. I don't I don't argue with black women at all. Do you know, homie? Do you know that I got a girl to visit one of my shows because <laughs> we she was going in and I was replying back at her right, and she ended up finding we somehow we ended up finding out we lived in the same state i was like you want to come come to my show talk that same shit she ended up showing up to my show <laughs> now i never i never smashed i never smashed but <laughs> they they'll it will go from that to flirting and just like that when you're dealing with black women so when i when i deal with black women in general i don't or i don't argue with them i just i just leave i just leave it alone i've actually i accidentally did it recently where it was this chick she was going in on me um uh, on my uh hairline but i had time i was just like i said something i was like man get out of here you got a bundle on top of your head and i said your hairline is worse than mine without that bundle you know what i mean i was going i was going in but she liked it <laughs> i could tell she liked it i was just like you know what let me just stop this conversation it's just, yeah, it's just, it, you know. I can't, I can't do this no more. <laughs> I promise you, bro. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you go back and forth with a black woman, she, 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 she considers it flirting. If you can like roast her back, it's very. It's un it's very unproductive and it's kind of degenerate behavior where it's just like because the, the problem well people people like, oh no, that's kind of hot. No, you don't what people don't understand is this. Okay, you start getting with her, right? And it just turns into always a argument, always a fuss about something. And really they just want you to hate fuck them. And if you are a man that's trying to do something productive in life you don't have time to be getting riled up by 
by straggles, <laughs> right? You don't have time to be getting riled up by hood rat chicks that are trying, that are looking for, that are looking to get hate fucked because they got their needs. And like I said, they, you know, women have their needs, men have their needs, but as men, you don't have time to be doing that kind of stuff on the regular, right? You, you just, you don't, you don't have time to be doing that. So that's not to, 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 to have that toxic, uh, uh, you know, that Jody, uh, 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 uh baby boy, uh, Taraji P. Hensi, Taraji P. Henson, like women think that that's regular love. It's not. Jody and Taraji arguing. Let me see. This shit. This stuff right. This. So you get with any of them clients? It's this stuff right here. Fair use. Like stuff like that, where you basically have to put her in check. You know what I mean? You better calm the fuck down. Fuck, come on. So yeah, it, like that kind of, like I just I I I don't have time for that kind of stuff. It's 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 true, but especially if she already likes you and you treat her like garbage, she's going to stick. She's going to stick on you like glue. I don't know why this happens, especially if you're not even especially if you're not even trying to get with her. That's where she really will really attach to you. But for some reason, when she finds out that you actually like her for real, then she runs away from you. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, unfortunately that's how it works most times now if you're a chat or tyrone you could probably get away with mistakes here and there in terms of showing your vulnerability or not arguing and stuff like that but even with them it's this it's the same thing it's it's the same thing You say you want a woman to get away from you, just send them flowers. That's usually a turn off coming coming from me. Or how how about this? If she's going, if she's if she's coming on to you or she's giving you hints, be like, be like, wait, wait a minute. Didn't you say you have a boyfriend? Uh when when is the next time you're gonna see her? Uh I, I think you guys should work things out with your with your boyfriend. Do that. Be like be rational and be like logical about the discussion. Instead of being like, oh, word, you want to talk about it at my place or just be like, oh, it's, instead of doing that, that slick shit, do that. <laughs> and she'll just be turned off. She'll be like, oh, this guy does not get the hint. <laughs> that's how you do it. That's how shoot. That's how I do it out where I work. It keeps them when you just just be logical, or rational, like don't don't do anything rash. You know, I think you guys can work something out. You guys have something beautiful. <laughs> Just hit, hit them, hit them with that. They'll they'll stop hitting on you. And it's not that I don't want to fuck him. It's just right now, women are flight risks. You don't, you don't. They're they're too much of an X factor. Where you like you'll you're 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 working towards something. You're working to do something and. One bad text to her, right? One thirsty text on one of them thirsty nights, and that can end up ruining your whole shit. So they're just they're they're too much of flight flight risks for me to just be casually being with you. If I'm going to like me personally, if I'm I don't see myself having a girlfriend right now. Um, but if I have one. She's not going to speak English and I'm going to make sure of it. I'm going to make sure I speak. I, I'm going to choose a girl that can barely speak English. That's what's going to happen. If you have a girl that has an opinion, it's not going to work, especially in America. If you have a woman that's being logically that that has logic and that has reason. And that doesn't bother you and stuff. That's probably a man. 
and you need to check baby pictures. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but if I'm going, if I'm going, if I'm going to have a girlfriend, she's not going to be able to speak English. I'm going to, I'm going to choose a bitch that can only speak Spanish or that can only speak Mandarin or that can only, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That that's the, I'm going to have to do that. And even then, too much people know the the too much too much women know the American woman hustle. Look what happened to Fresh. Because people think what happened to Fresh cannot happen to the average. This is literally what's happening to 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 most men. <laughs> Like this, what's, what's happening to fresh is literally what's happening to Steve Crowder. You have the woman is literally trying to traffic your kid from you for more money. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're married. It doesn't matter if you were formerly married, you just got divorced. She's going to try to traffic your kid away from you for more money from the government. Nah, a woman that uses a brain that has to be a dude. Yeah, if you and I'll say like like I said, and even then, if you find a girl that is rational, logical, meaning or and but but or how about this? If she's just nice and she's pretty, but she's like casual looking and she doesn't have and she's not a thought. Now, what and she's like a six seven on a beauty scale now here's the here's the catch those women now and she's in shape this is the this is the catch though with those women even though she's a good woman the catch is now she's not going to settle at all right so let me give you an example you know we do you, you guys know the celebrity female singer tyla right you guys know who tyla is right let me bring up tyla but do you know that she has a sister tyla and sid me right let me uh okay so let me do they have a a, a, a side by side Okay. Let me do a side. Oh, I don't know if they have a side by side. So, I don't know if that's the best side by side picture. Um, hold on for a sec. Let me see the best side by side picture of Sydney and Tyler. I don't know. So, because I need I need to bring this up as an example. I need to bring this up as an example because this is gonna I, I'm gonna tell you what the dating market is like right now. Tyler and shit and her sister. So here, ah, this is perfect. Open up image in new tab. Okay. So right here, you have the star, Tyler, to the left. Now, obviously, this is a older, sorry, this is an older picture of when they were younger. So this is probably when they were like 18 or 19 years old. So this is the beauty queen right the the star the she's on the magazines and whatnot and now this is her low-key sister right you know she's still she's you know pretty enough she has the glasses but she looks like the homebody now in this dating market the homebodies the ones like that are the real homebodies that really have the low body count homebodies uh decent chicks in real life 
you know, de decent, you know, a five or six on the look scale. They're not settling. You actually might have a better chance of getting a Tyler than getting with the Sid in today's dating market. Why? Because most guys, they're going to be intimidated by tyla meaning they're gonna look at her star power they're gonna be like there's no way she's even checking for me but what happens with a lot of the nines or the eights right the eight nines or the tens they're used to men being afraid to approach them so what ends up happening is they'll end up with a guy you'll be like huh that doesn't make sense but that was probably the one guy that was brave enough to approach now, she'll still have that power dynamic over him because she will be still over him status wise, uh, money wise and whatnot. But he will be the one dude, the one dude that approached her. She'll give him at least his credit by approaching her that she'll give him the privilege of going out with him. Now. Here's the catch. So most dudes are going to be like, nah, let me find a Sid. But what people don't understand is Chad is pounding all the SIDs. <laughs> and if she's and say if she's not being pounded out by Chad, she's going to wait for the perfect deal, meaning she's not going to settle. Because she knows how most dudes are looking for a SID, a homebody. So if she's in good health. She has a low body count, right? If and she's pretty enough, the SIDs, she's going to aim for the top dudes. She's aiming for the top dudes. Because the top dudes are looking for a SID, not a Tyler. Because they're looking at Tyler, they're like, oh, she's a nine. To, uh, I don't even, I can't even. More people are going to approach the SIDs. So either so the, the problem is the SIDs, the SIDs are either getting pounded out by the Chads or they're waiting out. Meaning they're waiting for the perfect deal. They're not going to settle. So either way, you're fucked. <laughs> v, v was like, I don't understand why women are like this. <laughs> he said the hotter she is, the crazier she is. Exactly. I already know Tyler. She's crazy as bat. She's batshit crazy. I already know. Tyler's got to be batshit crazy. I already know Tyler. Tyler, like remember, Tyler's the one to the left. Sid is the one to the right. I already know Tyler's batshit crazy. I already know. On the low. But I'm telling you, so so because most guys they're gonna think, okay, let me go for the Sid. But the Sid is being approached by the top dudes as well. So either she's getting pounded out by the Chads or she's going to wait it out. She's not going to or or if she's not getting pounded out by the Chads, she's going to wait out and wait for. A really rich dude to come through and be like, oh, my God, this is the perfect homebody I was looking for. <laughs> he said, just look at Amber Heard. How about this? Just look at the average. Trad con woman, right? Let's you'll take like um I, I don't remember her name. It's this trad con that I saw Rolo go on a show with. Who isn't she isn't that bad of a person, but it was interesting. She was talking about I wasn't looking for a man with money. And then Rolo was like, Wait, how much does your man make? But is it and she was like, and then Rolo's like, Isn't your man a millionaire? And she just put her head down. It like I said, the tr like the real like the traditional girls that dudes think they want they're not settling they're not settling or if they are gonna go with a man that doesn't have any money he's in a he has a college degree that is in a field where he's going to eventually make the money that she thinks she deserves to be a part of women in 2024 are not settling guys just to let you get like they're not Women that are going to make sure they have a low body count, make sure they're clean, make sure they're healthy, make sure they're in shape, 
they're not settling for a UPS worker. That does that's <laughs> that shit doesn't happen anymore. It's actually the beauty queens that be settling for the UPS workers nowadays. Because they realize they can't get the attention of the chads because the nines and the tens, they're 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 they're, the ch- they're, they're waiting for the chads to settle. And they realize quickly that the chads are not going to settle. So before the beauty queens hit the wall, they find a regular dude. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is how it works. And then the Sid, the Sid type girls, they end up waiting it out. So they end up being single forever, chatted out, or they end up waiting for their Prince Charming. That's This is the dating market right now. And if you do get a nine and 10, just understand that she's already been through at least 20 or <laughs> 10 to 20 people already. You're not you're not getting you're not get a uh, you're not getting a nine. That's a uh, with with a with a two body count or one or zero body count. That's that's not going to happen. <laughs> you better <laughs> please. Unless if you already had her in high school, that's not going to happen. Here in the U.S., women are not suitable to marry anymore, just not worth the risk. So even like I said, even if you find a perfect girl, when you're looking at the just off the divorce laws, the cohabitation laws in general. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Anyway, I'm going to. But I'll say this, man. But yeah, like I said, like the, the Sid, so people, the average dudes are going to look at Sid and be like, I can get a Sid. I want a Sid, but you don't understand Sid. The average girls, they not settling no more, dog. They don't, they, they ain't settling. And then on top of that, <laughs> I'm telling and then on top of that, the Sid, she can glam herself up to look like an eight, nine or a 10. So she doesn't, even if she is average, she doesn't look, she does, she doesn't see herself as average. She sees herself as, look, when I put this costume on, I can get any man I want. So, you know, but let let, let me uh, sign off on that. I can, I can, I can go in on this because this is, that's the perfect illustration of what the dating market is like right now. Shout out to you guys. I'm going to sign off. Thank you, Garrett, for signing in. Midnight Sun. Thank you, the War Band. You know what I mean for tuning in to me, man. Thank you. Uh, shout out to V. Shout out to Pyro. Thank you guys for tuning in. You know what I mean. Thank you for uh tuning. Yeah, thank you for tuning in. I know I started off with sports, and then we started off talking about our masculinity voices and all this stuff. <laughs> thank you, Angel, for tuning in. I well, I already know Angel sleep. Uh, let, yeah, let me not even. I know Angel sleep. Uh, one of the elder statesmen that we got here. Let me see. Uh, shout out to you, Angel. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, shout out Garrett. I said shout out Garrett. Lorette, if you're listening, thank you. V, thank you for uh tuning in. Uh, Midnight Sun, thank you. Oh no, it was perfect. It was perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> Cause I had nothing else to say about the sports. <laughs> I just wanted to give Cam his his uh his propers even if he is possibly on the on the on the on the on the fruity side but the hate that he got from uh the sports media and his contemporaries was unwarranted and i wanted to give him his props (laughs) but man shout out to you man midnight sun thank you guys and i'm gonna sign off on here man